Jason, San Francisco Giants getting together. Second game of a three-game set. There's nine ball games left in the 2010 regular season. The Rockies lost last night two to one. Great pitchers duel between Tim Lincecum and Yolis Chassin. So here are the current standings as the Rockies need wins virtually every night. They're four and a half back in the West. They're four and a half behind San Diego and the Giants, if you will, tied atop the wild card. Atlanta is a half game back now out in the National League East. Hi once again, everybody, with George Frazier. I'm Drew Goodman. Last night, a, a tough pill to swallow. It's now five losses in a row to turn it around. you got to start with one win. Well, you have to start with one win, and hopefully the Rockies put the right guy out on the hill today, and that's going to be Jason Hamill, a guy that's 7-2 and two in this ballpark, good earned run average of what he's been able to accomplish, and he's the guy they got to turn to, but he's the guy that's got to get into the sixth inning. You cannot have a four-inning performance again from Hamill. He's got to be able to get you into the sixth where he can use the rest of the formula. And one thing about Barry Zito, he's had great numbers in September, great numbers in the second half, and he's pitched pretty well against the Rockies. How about this, though? He's 18-27 and 27 in his career versus the National League West. But he has pitched very, very well against the Rockies, as you mentioned. Jason Hamill has pitched well against the Giants. He just doesn't have a win to show for He doesn't for have it. a win for it, but a very good earned run average. 13 and two-thirds innings that he's pitched against them this year and only given up three runs. So he's pitched well. The team has won both of those ball games, two to one and four to three. But it's a game that he's going to have to go out and he'll utilize everything. The most important thing he's got to do is establish fastball command early in the game and then rely on the secondary stuff to finish hitters off. Sounds like a plan. The Rockies hope to have a plan against Barry Zito. Turn the tables on Zito a little bit. And one guy who's hit him well is Carlos Gonzalez.
Drew Goodman, George Frazier. Carlos Gonzalez has had an extraordinary year. He's one of the few guys that's had success against Barry Zito, by the way, George, at 375 average. He has had that average against Barry Zito, and it's been big key hits that he's been able to come up with. Too. You see all the numbers for him over the course of the year. Everything in the top four, and that's the home runs, his fourth right now. Everything else, first or second for Cargo. Is he the MVP? He's got a top, very good chance of winning the National League MVP. There's, there is going to be competition, but I think he's the guy, obviously, at the top of the list. Now, I will say this. The Giants pitching staff overall is handling fairly well, 245. So when I said big hit, he has five home runs against their staff and 12 RBIs. He is a guy, and we've talked a lot about this, George. He and Chulowitzki in particular, great players, obviously. And what makes them even better in my mind, they want the baseball. They want, you know, they we talk about football. They want the football. Yeah. They want the basketball. Like, they want the at bat late in a ball game. Well, it's simply put this way is that uh, it's like the, today when you're talking to Bruce Bochy, he goes, Boy, I was hoping Wilson to get through the ninth easy because I didn't want to see Gonzalez and Tula Whiskey come up in the ninth inning. They're in the thought of every single manager when they play the Rockies. That's the way it goes. All right, the Rockies obviously need this one in the worst way. Colorado and San Francisco. Come on back to Coors Field. The Rockies hope to do some tap dancing. Quest high speed internet get blazing fast speeds that won't burn up your wallet. Buy E470, use E470, you'll get to the airport with time to spare. Buy Ford Super Duty, built stronger, tougher, better, built Ford tough. Ford Super Duty, drive one. And by Brakes Plus, a whole lot more. Hey, a big shout out to our friends, the Tap Dogs, for their help with our tees and open the last couple of days. They're performing here in Denver at the Buell Theater through tomorrow, so go check them out. Your daughter, Georgia, is a yeah. tap dancer. It's fun to watch. Very talented people that operate and uh, do the tap dancing. It's fun for me. You used to tap dance through lineups. I've, yeah, never, I've never tapped dance. Yeah, well, <laughs> hope you hit the right notes, I can tell you that. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at the uh, Giants lineup, as written out earlier by Bruce Bochy. Andres Torres making his first start since an emergency appendectomy a couple of weeks ago. He has very good numbers against Hamill. Freddie Sanchez, Aubrey Huff, Buster Posey. Pat Burrell, the difference in the ball game last night. A hanging slider against Yoli Chassin, who otherwise was marvelous. Jose Guillen, Juan Arribe, Mike Fontenot again at third. And Barry Zito is on the hill. Let's take a closer look at Jason Hamill's numbers. George, the key is length. No, it has to be length. you got to get into the sixth inning tonight. You would hope you would and be able to have the lead doing it and turn it over to the bullpen. 
but it's fastball command. Now, Hamill in his last three has struggled. Everybody knows about it. 0 and 1, 780 earned run average, 24 hits over those 15 in third innings. Now, the good part about what we're going to talk about is what he has done in Coors Field this year. 7 and 2 with a 3.90 earned run average. It's been outstanding. First pitch is brought to you by Domino's Pizza. Text keyword pizza followed by a space and your name to 95323 to receive your Domino's special offer. And to be entered to win a pizza party for 12, one weekly winner will be chosen. Another gorgeous, gorgeous evening in lower downtown Denver. Happy you're with us as always. The Rockies need some good mojo here in the last nine days of the season. Torres takes high ball one from Jason Hamill. And that first pitch, again, if you're, if you're wondering about a tired arm, that first pitch, 94 miles an hour. And not, and not only will a tired arm affect a little bit of the velocity, but more so the command of the fastball because you have a tendency to drop your elbow and work under. So you create a little bit of velocity. You do have that. But it's a matter of staying in that good downward plane, utilize your 6-7 frame, and throw strikes with it. And that's in there, 2-1. And I talked to Jason after that last start. He said, my arm does not hurt at all. He said, and, and I know the velocity is where it normally should be. He looks up at the gun. His teammates tell him, that's a good changeup. A slider, two and two. It may have been the changeup. A little bit high up into the strike zone, but yet uh, two and two count. Take advantage of it. Torres owns two home runs against Hammer. And this ball is pulled to right field, and it is a foul ball. And a curveball at 79 miles an hour, left a little bit to the middle half of the plate. It's almost cost him. And Torres is three for six lifetime against Hamill with two bombs. Jay Payton in his 12th big league season getting the start in left field. Dexter Fowler is sitting out the initial portion of this game. In center field, Carlos Gonzalez, Ryan Spielborg's in right. Mora, who was ill yesterday, that's why he left the ball game in the fourth. He's better. He said third base to Lewitsky Young help with Chris Ionetta doing the catching. Two balls, two strikes on Torres. Good pitch there. That was well located. And we should tell you right now, when we get to the latter portion of this ball game, one guy not available to Jim Tracy is Seth Smith. Seth is under the weather and left the ballpark. And a bouncing ball to Young. And a nice play. Good pick up by Todd Hill. One out. A lot of times when you are a second baseman, regardless of the arm strength, when you cut across the middle this way, a lot of times this ball is going to be low because you're rushing the throw in a very off-balance situation. And that's where Todd Helton comes into play. I actually think, and this is not a knock, because EY is a work in progress defensively. George, EY is better on the, on the high high difficulty plays perhaps in some of the well, routine seems, plays. Yeah, he seems to be that way. I think the more time he has to think about it sometimes, uh, the more ability he has to, to let it get in. I mean, seven errors on the season. This is a uh, 48th ball game. It's a high number of errors for a guy playing second base, but again, it's not from the fault of not working at it and trying to get better every day. One strike to count on Freddie Sanchez. Lincecum obviously was terrific yesterday. Brian Wilson, after eight innings from Lincecum, a 1 2 3 ninth. Eight of the nine innings were perfect for the Giants. But what should not be lost in the aftermath of that 2 to 1 loss for the Rockies is the work of Yoli Chassin in the biggest ball game he has yet to pitch in in his young career. The 22 year old was terrific. Well, and I'll say this too. This is a ball into right center field. Spillboard's going to watch it sail out. This is gone. Opposite field home run from Freddie Sanchez. Not what you'd expect from Sanchez. Just the sixth home run of the year. Uh, and, and the Giants know that the Padres came back and won, the, won their ball game four to three over Cincinnati. So they realize what's at stake with them. And as far as uh, this National League West lead is concerned, the first coach he high five and Freddy Sanchez early in this game, showing power, his sixth of the season on a fastball that stayed a little bit up, and it was out over the plate on the Hyundai camp. So he gets a pretty good extension from the second base. Ball took off. That's the kind of the hot spot here at Coors Field when you see a ball go into that bullpen area. 
There's always been, for whatever reason, an area of a park that carries, and that is the, the part here at Coors Field. Foul back, one and two on Aubrey Huff. The Giants, when they score first this year, have a 60 and 18 record, which is outstanding. And they've won 15 of their last 16 when they score first. Rockies will try to turn the tables on that uh, mark tonight. Giants are a season best 20 games above 500. And going back to the 5th of July, they're 46 and 27, 19 over 500, and that is the third best record in the game. That's a base hit. That breaking ball hung. And Huff is aboard with one out and a run already in. When the Rockies score seven or more, you know the drill. Go to Taco Bell the final day, or the following day in the state between four and six. Get your Rockies taco special from Taco Bell. Not early. And the pad off of that underneath his pant leg. Since being hit, that's just his second hit. He's now two for 14 on this road trip since fouling that ball off of his team. Huff's trying to move up, and he'll do so. And then it goes off of Eric Young. He got hit, I think, in the face. He's down. Huff's at third, and here comes Keith Duggar in a sprint to take a look at Ewat. Down on the neck, or the that maybe the jaw right underneath the ear. Yeah, it hit pretty solid, obviously, because the ball didn't carry very far after it hit EY, just 10, 15 feet out into the outfield. That's a wild pitch on Hamill and an error on Chris Ionetta to allow Huff to go to third. Making sure that Keith Duggar is checking out the side of Eric Young Jr. Here's the throw ball getting away from from Ionetta. Snap throw down, hits onto the grass, goes off the edge of the glove, and that's where it caught EY. He was trying to do the old catch on the hop and quick tag uh, to speed things up to get Huff, and he just whiffed on the baseball and it caught him right on the side of the face. I'll tell you what, that's tough. Watch when that ball comes in on the Hyundai cam. See, he's trying to catch and tag at the same time, and by doing that, he just whipped on the ball and it caught it. it appears he's going to stay in the ball game. It, uh, obviously, his quickness benefited him there. Drew more than one, uh, more than one way. Yeah. You know, a sloppy start now to this baseball game. You give up the home run to Freddie Sanchez, and then the wild pitch compounded by the low throw. And now the Giants poised to get a second run. The Rockies play their infield halfway. Young getting the signal now. He's moving in. And a strike one and one. I think one of the hardest things about baseball, George, you can speak to this as well as anybody. Here's the one one. Good block by Ionetta. Is it unlike football, unlike basketball, when you get ticked off, when you get angry, when you're frustrated, and clearly the Rockies are, it doesn't always work to your benefit in the game of baseball. Typically it works against you. Almost 90% of the time when you do get that hangry feeling and you're not making the plays, making the pitches. Look at that. Fired up. Fortunately, it hit a chair. It didn't hit anybody. I've seen that happen, George, more this year, I think, in the last five years combined. Yeah, absolutely. All that going on is uh, one of those things you look back at, and it's just uh, the fans booing a little bit. Buster Posey told him to keep the bat. So I'll get another one out of the rack. Guy that's really happy is all the people sitting around him because he caught it.
Maybe instead of getting stick them on their bats, they're getting slick them on their bats. Yeah. Two and two on Posey. Three and two. One out. Aubrey Huff, who runs pretty well, is at third. Yeah, he tried to get the curveball. Spun up there. So now Posey to first. Not the worst situation because you have a guy who doesn't run well in Pat Burl if you can get him to hit it on the ground. Of course, one ball he didn't hit on the ground last night. It was a difference in the ball game. The two run home run he hit after a walk to Posey. Slider that, uh, again, this was well over 100 pitches now for Sashin in the ball game. That slider did not have the depth that the other sliders had had in the previous inning. Stayed out there long enough for Pat Burrell to connect. And he hits this ball down the left field line and deep and off the wall foul. Had a renaissance in San Francisco. It was released by Tampa earlier this year. As you see the flight of this baseball. And yeah, George, even going back to last year at Tampa, his numbers were, were not very good. Well, he's a free agent. They gave him a two year contract, 16 million. They were not good. He didn't hit for an average. Uh, really struggled with the power, and that's what they wanted him for is to be a DH. I think the one thing that he did do that uh, was beneficial is he went to Fresno in AAA and he proved to the Giants and Bruce Bochy that he could still play. And then uh, since he came back up again, it's all been pretty good. Obviously, the 17 home runs, 45 RBIs, and Pretty much right at his career average. He's in the 265, 270 range. But yeah. it's the power is what has meant so much to this giant lineup. And last year with Tampa, he hit 221. He was way below that when he was released. Hello. XL Energy Fun Fact. Last night was the 10th time since 2002 that Burl has hit a home run in the seventh inning or later to turn a deficit into a lead for his team, the most for any player. Over that span, a clutch player as well. Okay. San Francisco's now hit 26 home runs in the month of September. That's third on the list behind Philadelphia. And yes, Colorado, who has 28 home runs in the month of September. A fastball in again at 95. Did you know that dimmer switches can help your light bulbs last 20 times longer? Find more money saving info at responsiblebynature.com. First and third. Top of the first inning. This is the 27th pitch already. Swung on a hit. That is the second out. Great location. You can see all these other pitches where they had worked him. Everything was up and in, up and in, and on the inner, inner part. And coming right out of the hand on a circle change from Jason Hamill. He got great extension, which created that late dip in the baseball under the bat for Pat Burrell. Jose Guillen. Slider for a strike. It's 0 1. George mentioned it. The Padres had a walk off win at Petco today in the ninth, 4 3 over Cincinnati. Atlanta finally won. They shut out Washington 5 0. Cubs throwing dirt on St. Louis 7 3 a final at Wrigley. And that's on the inside corner 1 and 2. Thirty pitches in the inning. Well, it just tells you what's going to have to happen. He's going to have to have some short innings, some nine, ten pitch innings, if he's going to work deep into this game. It's been a disturbing trend. I mean, the last couple times through the rotation, De La Rosa. As you look at the uh, check swing, De La Rosa, George pitched well. Chassin has pitched very well. He has. And other than that, it's been early to the bullpen, unfortunately.
Two and two on Guillen. It's hard to play good defense when you've been out in the field now 15 minutes. Well, it's all the three, two, three, you know, three, one counts, the foul offs, the two twos, the wild pitches. At times that can take you out of your game as much as it can uh, yourself mentally as a pitcher. Nice play by Jason. In the inning, Freddie Sanchez did an opposite field home run. And then Hamill did a good job preventing Huff from scoring. will begin things for the Rockies. And he'll be followed in the lineup today by Jay Payton. Payton will bat second. He has swung the bat well since being called up from Colorado Springs. And then it'll be Cargo, 6 for 16 with a home run against Barry Zito. Troy Tulowitzki has struggled against Zito. Mora, Helton, Spielborg, Zionetta, and Hamill. Barry Zito had a great first half. At one point, he was 6 and 1 this year. And unlike last year, where he was very poor in the first half and outstanding in the second half, he's had a tough second half this year. Two and nine, 432 earned run average. The opposition, though, still hitting just 243 against him. So his overall numbers 192 innings pitched on the season. He's given up 174 hits. He's walked 77. He struck out 142. Interesting note for me. First half of his career, he's five games under 500 at 65 and 70. And the reason they called him Big Game Barry in Oakland is that second half career numbers, 77 and 49. Big numbers, particularly in September, where his overall record is 26 and 17. Now, all that being said, he has struggled against the Rockies uh, of late at times. He has not won here in this ballpark in a while. And Zito's career numbers against the West, 18 and 27. Tag, Huff gets young. The throw by Fontenot pulled Huff off the bag. And Huff made a good tag. And he like taking a little bit of a rough trail today in this ball game after getting hit in the face on that throw down by Ionetta. Was punched here by Posey as the throw came off, and then the hard tag in the stomach, and then the fall. They followed it on the Hyundai cam. You can see the tag was applied. He went trying to duck out of it, took it on the helmet. Been a tough first inning, you're right. Jay Payton takes a strike. Jay hitting 438 since his call up. Seven hits and 16 at bats, including three doubles. For 1,100 hits in Peyton's career. And he pops this one up to shallow center field. Torres coming on. 
Two outs. Giants defensively will have Pat Burl in left field. Torres in center field. Jose Guillen in right field. Fontenot, Oribe, Sanchez, and Huff in the infield with Buster Posey doing the catching. The two corner outfielders for San Francisco are a liability. Guillen wants a very good right fielder. Doesn't run very well anymore. He was DHing for the most part. Not happy about it in Kansas City. And Pat Burrell has never been much defensively. No, he hasn't been. I mean, it's, and the thing is, he doesn't run well, and he, and he throws okay. I mean, he's got an above-average arm, but he just never has been able to cover. He was paid for the long ball in the RBIs, and he had three 30, run, uh, 30 home run seasons in Philadelphia. That's what he was in the lineup for. 0-1 on Carlos Gonzalez. And that is smoked to center field and a base hit. And he goes on with his success against Barry Zito. That'll allow Tulowitzki to hit. It was five for 36, though, lifetime against Barry Zito. Great crowd at Coors Field. Last night, more than 49,000 in attendance. It's 2-0. and You know what Troy has an opportunity to do, George? To win the National Player of the, uh, of the Week three, uh, year, three weeks in a row? Well, I don't know about that. Uh, no, no, he doesn't. I just threw it he, out there. No, he, he won two weeks already. He hasn't had a great week this week, but that's okay. I think he could still win Player of the Month. But he also may win the shortstop triple crown. Nobody's going to win a triple crown this year. Cargo has a great chance of winning two of the three triple crown categories in the National League. Average in RBIs. But Tulo leads all Major League shortstops in home runs by three, in RBIs by a couple, and in batting average by 12. How about that? Well, I, I didn't know they gave them out position by position, but I, I think that, is they're going to start that this year. Yeah, and um, Doug started. He just told me <laughs> they're going to request your presence to be the uh, present the trophy to, to be the presenter. Okay. I'll make some opening remarks and then you take over. But that is something, honestly. It is. It's yeah. a great accomplishment. Not to mention. Find me a better defensive shortstop. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing about it. Uh, Tula Whiskey has done everything offensively, but defensively, he's only committed nine errors this year. Well, you know, he can go one step further because not only does he lead all Major League shortstops in the Triple Crown categories offensively, he also leads the National League in fielding percentage among shortstops. Three and one on Troy. Cargo at first. And now you have two odd for Melvin Mora. Now Mora is one of those guys being in the American League that had some history with Barry Zito. Unfortunately, Zito had won most of the battles. He's eight for 37 with four RBIs. Very quickly, Tulowitzki ought to win the gold glove this year. The last few years, it's been Jimmy Rollins. Jimmy's a great player, but Jimmy's been hurt most of this year. He doesn't even have enough games to qualify. Well, the thing about that qualification thing, uh, you know, that all went out the window. Fastball in misses. Went out the window in Texas. Uh, forget when uh, Rafael, Rafael Palmeiro played, yeah. played 30 games. Played 30 games in one. Yeah, it's a joke. So I don't know if there's a games played qualification to win the, the gold glove, which I don't think there is. Well, there's been so many headlines uh, in all of baseball and throughout the Rocky Mountain region for what Gonzalez and Tulowitzki have done, but Melvin Morris had himself a fine September. 
two home runs, 13 RBIs. He's 24 for 76, hitting 312. That's in there two and one. Actually, what I meant by qualification, he can't qualify for any sort of. Well, he he, he wouldn't qualify for any sort of offensive stat anyhow because he's having an off year. But he doesn't have enough at bats. He's missed a ton of time. If you look at uh, RBIs over the last ten days, Melvin Moore in that group. Two and one, two on with two outs. Rockies trailing one nothing, bottom of one. Three and one. Wally Bell, we have an ID Wally. He's the home plate umpire tonight. John Perspect's at first, James Hoy at second, and Laz Diaz at third. Now, well, Wally Bell, a lot like Laz Diaz, once you establish yourself, and Zito's obviously done that through his career, he typically gives you those pitches. Right now, he's not given the low strike so far. He would give in with the fastball three and two well, veterans make those kind of pitches on a three one count with a guy that's uh, had some pretty good success and a guy that's seen numerous times to throw a changeup. although ball four it appeared to be a fastball part of the reason behind that pitch selection from Zito is there's a left handed bat and Todd Helton with an old friend today in batting practice Peyton Manning stopped by as he'll take on the Broncos tomorrow afternoon. He and Todd remain very good friends. They talk on a regular basis. And this is looped down the right field line. This is going to drop. One run is scored. Here comes Tulowitzki at the throw to the plate up the line. Throws in there safely. And the Rockies take the 2-1 to one lead on a bloop double by Melvin Mora. Well, remember, uh, again, Jose Guillen in right field is not the same player he was 10, 15 years ago as far as speed is concerned. Moore typically pulls the ball. He gets jammed here. And the ball's going to flare out over first baseman Aubrey Huff and out of the reach of Sanchez. So then it's a race between the ball and Guillen. Guillen bobbled the baseball. That's going to allow Tulewiski to score because one thing Guillen still possesses is a very strong arm. On a southwest cam. If he doesn't bobble, pretty good chance to the whiskey probably is out. So Mel Melvin continues to drive in runs at a high rate here over the last four weeks. Well, now front, it's one and one. Todd, five for 22 against Zito. Fifteen ribbies now in the month of September for Melvin Mora. Melton trying to make it three to one. That's a pitch, George, you really have to hang with as a hitter. Because he has one of the best curveballs in baseball. I tell you what, a lot of barking going on out of the San Francisco dugout. They thought this pitch should have been called a strike, but Wally Bell, one of the few umpires, it's not where he caught it, but it's where it came across the plate and obviously came around the plate. We got a heater, and Todd was on it. Take a look at our Geico quote of the day three and two on Todd. Gary Zito, I'm not trying to be cocky, but I set such a high standard for myself. I'm not happy when I pitch seven innings and give up two runs and get a win. And that's probably why he's won 142 games in his career. I don't think there's anything wrong with setting the bar really high. Go back to uh, Elton pulls a foul. Bygone error. You went out in the seventh inning and tried to take the baseball from Bob Gibson or Sandy Koufax or Tom Seaver or Steve Carlton. You gotta be kidding me. It'd be a fight. Well, even Randy Johnson, Kurt Schilling, guys that had a lot of complete games of uh, more recent years that they want the baseball and want to pitch deep in the game. Roy Halladay. Yeah, go grab it from him once. Curveball misses. Well, saw it the whole way. And that'll bring up Spillboards. All of this with two outs. And here comes Dave Brighetti. 
Well, even though this is going to show on the fourth strike zone where he caught this baseball, it's going to catch the very top of the zone. But as it crossed over the plate and appeared to an umpire, it's about head high. So on the curveball, he's not going to get that high pitch called. Uh, and, and again, it's because of the break of the baseball and release point of where it is. Two on for Spielboards, who's hit 315 in the second half. In there for a strike. Zito's walked two. Hamill threw a lot of pitches in the first uh, inning, and now Zito with his 29th pitch. Has an 0-2 count on spillboards. Got a fastball ahead, down, down on the knees, and then came right back. Put an off-speed pitch for a strike. Spillboards eight for 32 against Zito. Buster Posey only has one pass ball this year, and a lot of that's credited to Bill Hayes, their catching instructor and bullpen catcher for the Giants in a long time. Veteran catcher at the big league and minor league level. Used to work for the Rockies, Billy Hayes. Boy, that pitch was real close also. That's why Zito's upset. There have been some borderline pitches, not called strikes. That one is. So Spielborgs is gone, but the Rockies take a two to one lead on the Melvin Moore of Luke double to right. Jonathan Herrera will take over at second base and he'll bat leadoff. First pitch swinging. And Jonathan Herrera will get tested. Not a hard test, but he has a rebase pop up. One out. That'll bring up Mike Fontenot. Let's check in with Mark Staff for tonight's great Colorado payback sideline report. Hey, Mark. Hey, guys. I made a point of seeking out Chris Iannetta before the game to talk to him about Jason Hamill and the dead arm. Of course, he's catching tonight. They're friends. They live within 15 minutes of one another in the offseason. And I said, what do you expect from your pitcher today and your friend? And he said, you know what? Even if his velocity is down, say 88, 89, as long as the location is there, I think we can get by and get a win in this game and get some innings in. He was very confident about it. And then the conversation went, 
to an interesting way. And, and I said, you know, as a catcher, you guys throw the ball a lot. You're always throwing it back. Paul Phillips chimes in, also a Rockies catcher, and they say, yeah, we can get dead arm too. And, Drew, I know you caught back in the day, and, George, you can attest to this, as Herrera grabs one and throws another out. Catchers do throw the ball a lot, and they can get a dead arm just like a pitcher, right? Well, most of the dead arm mark actually occurs in spring training because you come in thinking you're in shape, and then it's all the PFP, the throwing of the batting practice, the running, and the throwing you do there, and then about halfway through there, you're going to hit a dead arm period where you don't feel like anything's coming out of your arm, and you kind of build it back up again as a pitcher in spring training. A little unusual to get one this late in the season. You can get a tired arm, not a dead arm. I think if you talk to players, they will tell you no matter what position, there are days that the arm feels great, and there are other days where they feel like, man, I don't have any zip. It's karma, on it. man. That's all it is. It's karma. You get out of bed, you feel horrible, you're going to be horrible all day. You feel great, you're going to have a good day. There you go. Here's the one how on Barry Zito. That's in there for a strike. Some days you feel light on your feet out there shagging, running around, having fun in the green grass, and other days you want to just stand and look like a bad plant. Yeah, like when I, George, when I was doing that tap dance uh, thing, this ball is in the air to left center field. Jay Payton on the fly to get over. When I was doing that tap dance thing when they were recording it earlier for the for the uh, you get tears. You get I just didn't feel like I brought my A game. Two to one, Colorado. I tap better. Sold a couple watches. It was a really yeah, it was a really good day. day. Yeah. yeah, we got to go to the diner twice. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Ionetta will lead things off, folks. We can't take credit for that. That's the Tap Dogs in there playing at the Buell Theater through tomorrow. One of the many things we can't do: tap dance. That's right. Well, you liked what Jason Hamill did there. 30-plus pitches to get through the first inning and just seven to get through the second. He needs those short innings like that to be able to carry himself deep into this ball game. Zito going to have to do much of the same. He struggled with 30-plus in the first. And now, all of a sudden, here he sets at 34 pitches in the ball game. 17 strikes, 17 balls. And I thought their dugout felt like he got squeezed pretty good by Wally Bell. Two and one. Ball is in the air to right field. Gian will make the catch one out. Well, last night set a new Rockies record for fewest combined hits in a ball game at Coors Field. The Rockies got two hits. 
And the Giants got a whopping three hits. So the five combined hits, two fewer than the seven against the Giants in 04 and the seven a couple of years ago when the Mets were in town. So Melinsicum got the win. His 15th of the year. Melinsicum yesterday was the two-time Cy Young Award winner. And, and again, he was a guy that set 91, 92 miles an hour during the game. But when he got a couple of runners on and got in a jam, it jumped to an average of 93.5. So that means it hit 94 a couple of times. Very good command of his break of ball through his slider and his changeup. I thought one of the best pitches uh, witnessed during that whole game was in the, with the third batter and, and Carlos Gonzalez. He threw a changeup to strike him out. And that really set a tone in that Rockies dugout of what that guy had in his uh, arsenal that night. He was good. Apple hits a foul out of play. Yeah, one other uh, note on Lincecum. You know, they talked about maybe during that stretch where he's 0 5 and earned run average 782. What's wrong? Is it his arm? Is he hurt? He's whatever. Uh, he was at the ballpark today at 11 o'clock doing his workout in the weight room and in the training room. After the start last night when he beat, beat the Rockies two to one. Two outs and that'll bring up Johnny Herrera for the first time in the ball game for Eric Young. Time for the breaks plus take a break poll of the game. Should the divisional series stay best out of five or be extended to seven games? Text rocks one for five. Text rocks two for seven. I'm a big proponent. When you play 162 games and you earn a trip to the postseason, because this isn't the NBA or the NHL where they seemingly take everybody. Only four make it. I think it should be best out of seven from the divisional series forward, not just the NL and ALCS and the World Series. Well, I agree. I think it should be, too. I think it, uh, you go out in that way by going seven games. A lot of times you expose the fourth or fifth starter in a guys, which is the weaker side of things. You don't. You get the true matchup of the 25-man roster that you're trying to get. Yeah, George, that's that's a, another great point about it because it it ultimately took your 25-man roster and, and sure. some guys that maybe went back and forth because of injuries and ineffectiveness to get you to the postseason. And then with the days off, when it's best out of five, it becomes who has the best one and two. I would agree with you, and I, and I think, and three, that three's going to get in there, but you know what? You, when you're best of five, though, I mean, you can be down two, two zip in a heartbeat. Two, two, and three and two on Herrera. Rockies hitters are being very disciplined not to chase the curveball in the dirt or the changeup. You know, when you've lost five in a row at this time of year, you endured a very difficult week. You don't care how pretty it is, you just want to have more runs at the end of the night. Than the San Francisco Giants. Yeah, and you're looking at it. I mean, right now, you know, Rockies win. The Padres have already won four to three. So I mean, it's a matter of gaining ground on somebody. Except Atlanta won also. They shut out the Nationals today five to nothing. When you look back over a course of a year, and you go, you know what? There was eight games out on the road that you should have won. One run losses or four walk offs. They should have won this game. That I mean, you can point out the 15, 20 games. If everything went your way, you would have won. Well, you can't bring those games back. You can only focus on what you're dealing with right now. Walk to Johnny Herrera. It's the third walk allowed by Zito in the ball game, and unlike Hamill, like he's going to have a, a real quick and efficient inning. Yeah, he's got two outs, but his next pitch will be his 50th. Let me tell you something, folks. It's time to do it. Let's do it right now. Put up $500 uh, deposit for season tickets for next year. 2011, the Rockies open a home against the Arizona Diamondbacks, and it'll guarantee you an opportunity to buy tickets for the National League uh, NLCS and the World Series tickets for 2010 if the Rockies happen to get in. Oh, 
Oh, and one on Jay Pate. Jay hit a fly ball to center field his first time. Two strike count on Pate. Wow, 51 pitches. Second inning of the ball game for Barry Zito. That's a lot. And this is a pop up to shallow left. Look out, Burl and Arebe almost collide. Walk to Jonathan Herrera. Zito's used 51 pitches so far. Two to one Rockies. Eric Young. Young's now out of the ball game, and Jonathan Herrera at second. Young got hit in the head twice in the first inning. Once defensively on a skip throw by Chris Ionetta hit him. Looked, in the, looked like in the neck area, and then on a swipe tag running up the line, Aubrey Huff got him. Well, that's that throw down from Ionetta. It skipped as he tried to tag, caught him up in the, into the area. Of the head, and that obviously hurt. And then this, I think, got him when he got past the back. That left shin that's been bothering him a little bit. He bit the dust going over the top of the head after getting tagged on the head. Pretty rough fight in the first couple of innings for EY. Everything's all right as he ices down in the locker room. One and two on Torres. It's been a big part of. The resurgent offense this year for San Francisco. Less than 200 bats in the big leagues last year. He has 43 doubles this year, which is third in the National League. Matt Holiday leading with 45 doubles. And this ball's hit well to right center field. And this is gone. That's the third home run by Andres Torres against Jason Hamill in eight at bats. And this is not, you know, we just mentioned Matt Holiday. This isn't Matt Holiday. This isn't a big slugger. Three home runs and eight ABs for Andres Torres against Jason Hamill. He just tied up the game. Yeah, he hit his 16th and he's missed some time, but that's on a high fastball at 93 miles an hour up in the zone. And he smoked it into right center field. You see it on the Hyundai cam. The mispositioning of the pitch by Hamill cost him a tie of the game. 
Freddy Sanchez a solo home run to virtually that same spot last in. Uh, correct, at 15th home, 15th home run for Torres, not 16th, but he has 61 RBIs now. Uh, earlier on a ball out over the plate in the first inning, Sanchez took advantage of it. Dropped this ball into the Rockies bullpen. The last nine games, he's hit 394. Five multi hit games over that span. Change up in there, two and two. To short. Take a look at this date in history brought to you by Dex One. Marketing solutions, business results at age 34. Willie Mays becomes the oldest player to slug 50 home runs in a season. The Giants center fielder was also the youngest to accomplish the feat when he hit 51 in 1955. Aubrey Huff connects to center field and this one's gone. 3-2 San Francisco on three solo home runs. That's the 26th of the year for Aubrey Huff. And if you're at home going, well, boy, it's a tired arm. There's, there's not enough mustard on the fastball. It may be fastball playing. It may be up in the zone, but it's not heat. He, he threw that at 95. Well, it's all about location. I think that's the biggest thing you got to look at. It's all about the location and where the pitch was. To see where it is. That ball back to the center. You can see I had his glove. Watch his glove. He wants this pitch right here on the outside corner. I'll leave the line drawn to see where the pitch is thrown. So you can see that ball's more into the middle of the plate than what Hamill wanted to put it. He's now given up 10 home runs to left handers, eight home runs to right handers after Freddie's in the first. And Buster Posey lines it to. Jay Payton in left field. That's a nice play by Payton. Two outs. Puff now has six home runs this year and just 62 at bats against the Rockies. Now Huff had really struggled out on this road trip. Two for 14 and then he hit that home run. Now this line drive a top. Just a lot of top spin on the ball. Hit right at Jay Payton. He was able to make a play on it. Struck out Pat Burrell the first time. There's a slider for a strike. Burrell released after 24 games with Tampa this year. He's hitting 202 with just a couple of home runs. Congratulations to the Texas Rangers. They clinched the American League West today with a victory over the A's. Windshield problems, call Safe Light Auto Blast, 303 287 5000. Go to safelight.com. And this is toward the gap in right center field. Fargo will cut it off, and he's going to hold Burl to a single. That's how important speed is, especially, especially. If you're an outfielder at Coors Field, well, you got to be able to cut the gaps off. And for a guy that typically pulls the ball, talking about Pat Pearl, it even emphasizes how much more speed you need when you're shading a little bit into left center. And then you got to chase this thing down from where Cargo started. Hit on the line, tailing away. He's able to get his footwork, kind of choppy steps where he could get stopped after catching the ball. Rodgers for the Rockies has gotten up and started to throw to get loose down in the bullpen. That's just another indication of how far Jim Tracy's not going to let this thing go. Now trouble in the first inning. And problems here in the third.
Big swing. And a foul ball off the bat of Jose Guillen. Solo home runs in the inning. Torres and Hoff. Well, you take advantage of that, and the way you can do that as a pitcher is now the rest of the dugout, and you got some home run hitters in there that's still in their lineup. Gian is obviously to play to Rebay, another guy that's left the yard a lot. Start to change speeds, offset their timing somehow, and get them off the fastball. Like that. Big sweeping slider just totally, totally fooled again for the third out of the end. There's the strikeout. Yep, Gian went around, no question. A couple of home runs, 3 2 Giants. Run by Torres to tie it, and then a home run by Aubrey Huff. Mantle visiting with Bob Apodaca. Meanwhile, at the plate, a fellow by the name of Carlos Gonzalez, and he takes a strike on the outside corner. Cargo ripped a single up the middle his first time up. He come around to score eventually on the two run double by Melvin Mora. The 0 2. 1 and 2. Strike 3. And now Gonzalez not happy with Wally Bell. Or maybe Wallace just having a bad night all the way around. First it was against Zito. Now maybe it is for Zito. A little bit of a high fastball. I think that's the complaint. And the complaint off of the plate, too, to go with it. Tulowitzki walked his first time. with 51 wins against just 25 losses at home this year. 
the team with a better home record in the National League, the Atlanta Braves. Braves at 52 and 23. And a broken bat, fly ball to left. Burroughs got it, two outs. That'll bring up Melvin Moore. It'll take us to our AT&T trivia question tonight. Who's the last Giant to win the Rookie of the Year award? This is a great question. Well, since they only got two guys that started the season with them this year, it's still the same two guys. Well, I guess Torres was too. But uh, Posey and Zito, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it seems that way. You know? Posey's got a chance, if we ask this mm -hmm. question a year from now, yep. to be the answer. He'd be my pick. <laughs> A slight nod over Hayward Jason Sanchez. Hayward, Gabby Sanchez, and Jaime Garcia. And you know you know what name we had to throw in there, even maybe ahead of Gabby Sanchez. Mike Stanton, that big kid in Florida who hits yeah. home runs every other night. Yeah, well, because he's in Florida and they're kind of out of it, you don't see a lot about it. You just got to kind of dig into the newspapers and see what his results have been. Dub's a big Sanchez guy. Gabby Sanchez from the University of Miami. Mike Stanton was a, a tight end recruited by Southern Cal. Tremendous athlete and ridiculous power. 2 2. And Moore is gone. Barry Zito works a 1 2 3 third inning. As we go to the fourth, the Giants lead it 3 to 2. Wednesday, Mel Vitora, three run first inning home run against Rodrigo Lopez. Clutch plays of the week brought to you by Amco AA MCO. Bottom third of the order in the fourth inning. Juan Arribe, who popped out. That's a one and one count. Jason Hamill. And the Rockies trailing three to two. If the Rockies were to go unbeaten the rest of the way, which is, you know, that's what it's come down to. You got to win eight of nine or nine of nine. It's 2007 revisited. And then the Padres went four and four, and the Giants went four and four. Remember, they play each other the last three games of the year in San Francisco. There would be a three way tie. One out. That'll bring up Fontenot. Well, a lot stranger things have happened in baseball. 
Well, that's, uh, I've said this many times. And I reference Billy Martin. I re- can reference Whitey Herzog, different guys, Tom Kelly. It's uh, You're in it till they put an X by your name and tell you it's over. And you know what? You're in it until the 27th out is recorded. You guys are shaking hands because the Rockies have given us so many thrills this year and near thrills with comebacks, including the one a couple of nights ago, George, in the desert. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, unfortunately, came up short 10 to 9. One ball, one strike on Font, though. Take a look at our Quest high speed pitch. Zito, not a hard thrower, 89 miles an hour. Jason Hamill has a good velocity tonight at 95. That's brought to you by Quest, the high speed internet provider of the Colorado Rockies. One ball, two strike count on Fontenot. He hit the ball on the ground a second his first time. Zito will come up, sixth hit against Hamill. He had one clean inning, that was the second. AT&T trivia question, the last giant to win the Rookie of the Year award, George, you know? No, I don't. You have to go back a ways. This is probably a big surprise. The count of Montefusco in 1975, John Montefusco went 15-9 with a sub-3 ERA. I think the count had the previous no hitter until Sanchez threw his. It was uh, interesting to look to at the home runs hit by a rookie for the San Francisco Giants. Well, Jimmy Ray Hart, that's not going to be broken for a while. 31 home runs. Kingman at 72 29. Cepeda at 58 at 25. Chili Davis 19. Tom Howler, Chris Brown, or Tom Howler hit 18, and then Chris Brown and Posey are tied for sixth most by a giant rookie with 16 right now. Well, it's got to go to Johnny Herrera. Zito gets the sack down. Fontenot to second base with two outs. Torres will come up. For your plumbing, heating, and cooling needs, call Bricogne at 303-777-3037. Think green, think Bricogne. Giants have been a good road team this year, 42-37. and 37. If you're over 500 on the road, you know you're talking about playing in the postseason. If Hamill could figure out Torres. Torres, four for eight lifetime against Jason Hamill. And with the home run he hit last inning, he's got three career home runs against Jason Hamill. And Hamill staying away. It's 2 and 0. Oh. A lot of exciting football going on around the country today, too. How about Alabama, Arkansas, huh? I know my grandson Easton. He's all pumped. Had the eye black on. Had his well, helmet ready to go. And, and, and now you're wiping, short. Yeah, you're wiping the tears yeah. uh, out of the eye black right now because Arkansas gave up a late touchdown to the Heisman winner Mark Ingram in Alabama, the number one team in the country, survived 24-20. Texas, not so fortunate. Rick Neuheisel's UCLA Bruins went to Austin and won in a walk. Which means, that? which means Houston Street is inconsolable. Matt Belisle's <laughs> inconsolable. <laughs> yeah, whole bunch of guys. Yeah. The street played at Texas. And Belisle, a big UT fan, having grown up in the shadow of the State University. Frio's in there, three and one.
Put a guy in scoring position with Torres at the plate in less than two outs, it's a dangerous situation. He's hit 400 this year. But with two outs, it's 231. So guys make a little better pitches to end the innings and prevent that runner from scoring with a couple of outs. That's what Jason's trying to do now. And uh, does it with a changeup on a 3-1 count to run it 3-2. and two. A good pitch right down on that outer half, but it, it appeared to be on the corner as far as Torres is concerned, and it ran away. The UCLA scored 34 to 12. Quick congratulations to Colorado State. They got off the schneid. They won today. Late field goal to beat Idaho 36-34 in Fort Collins. Torres retired by Herrera. 3-2 Giants help in the fourth. We'll start there. Barry Zito ready to face Todd Helton. Helton walked his first time up. That's good curveball. Strike one. 3 2 Giants. All their runs on home runs. Solo home run from Freddie Sanchez. Solo home run from Andres Torres. Solo home run from Aubrey Huff. On the ground to first. Aubrey Huff. One out. Today's Fast Cash sideline report brought to you by Fast Cash Gold Centers, where you'll always get 40% more for your gold. Again, here's Mark Stout. All right, guys, I made a point of asking Barry Zito yesterday who the MVP of the Giants was this year. And he paused and then thought about it, and he said, can I give you three guys? I said, sure, whatever you want. First name he mentioned, Aubrey Huff. He said he plays multiple positions. He's produced offensively, leader in the clubhouse. Then he said Matt Cain. And he said, Matt Cain gives us a chance to win every start. And when you look at his starts, he's made a quality start in 24 of his 31 outings. And then he said, I can't leave our all-star closer, Brian Wilson, off the list. And you saw what Wilson did last night in the ninth inning. Got his 45th save for the Giants. So that's Barry Zito's choices for the MVP of this very good San Fran team. Guys? Yeah, Mark, when you have a good team, there are a lot of candidates. This is going to be a base hit for Spielboards. Well, to think about this, in his career, he's won 56 ball games. Talking about Matt Kane, ten of those wins have come against the Rockets. I don't think you can forget the contributions of Juan Arebe this year in terms of power numbers. The average isn't great. Buster Posey in the second half of the year. Well, really, a lot of guys stepped up. I mean, Pat Pearl, what he's done since being activated. Posey, what he's done. Uh, picking up Jose Guillen, his three home runs, 15 RBIs. I mean, as they've tried to add punch to their lineup in the stretch run, uh, they've did it with people outside the organization. We showed it in last night's uh, lineup. Just two guys in last night's lineup who started their careers in a giant uniform. And Aubrey Huff's been terrific. 
Ball and a strike. and a strike. You know, in tonight's lineup with the Giants, Drew, the only guy that's on the field that was actually drafted and brought to the big leagues by the Giants is their catcher, Busty po Buster Posey. Everything else has been acquired through a trade or free agency. Well, the Rockies can put a lineup out there at times where everybody virtually was homegrown, except Carlos Gonzalez. That holiday trade from Oakland, but you know. five of five of the nine have been drafted and raised by the Rockies in the lineup tonight. Fouled off, but you know, on a lot of nights when Ionetta's behind the plate, Elton's at first, Eric Young or Jonathan Herrera at second, or Clint Barmas at second, uh -huh. Troy Tulowitzki, Ian Stewart. You go around the infield, and then in the outfield when you have Fowler and Spielborgs or Fowler and Smith. You know, Cargo would be the only guy, and that, that was part of a trade. And then even in the rotation, Jimenez, Chassin, Cook, Francis. There's no question the Rockies have done a terrific job in their farm system. Developing players, developing talent, and that's how it's got to work almost all mid-market teams and even even the teams with high payrolls they're not going to win unless they do, you know draft and develop well sign and develop well when you include Latin America here's a 2-2 in the air to center field well hit let's find out how well that's a very good play by Andres Torres now, a lot of guys would have given up on that ball as they hit the warning track and probably tried to play it off the wall Chris Iannetta gave it a ride into right center some 422 feet from the home plate area, but Torres, who has played a lot of ball games at Coors Field, started to feel pretty comfortable in the ground covering here, and he put the head down, ran to the area, a couple of glances, recognized where he was, and made a nice catch on the baseball about two feet from the wall in right center. Two outs with Hamill at the plate. Strike two. Zito strikes out Hamill, and that's all for the Rockies. Billboard's left at first base. 3 2 Giants.
baseball, call 303-571-1114 and ask about our hometown sports package. And by the fastest growing car dealer in America, Hyundai. Three two San Francisco. As you take a glance at the 16th Street Mall. Freddie Sanchez, Aubrey Huff, Buster Posey against Hamill. Good slider, strike one. Sanchez, a home run to right center and a ground ball to short. And this is in the air to center field. Cargo slides back and we make the catch one out. We do now have word from the Rockies clubhouse. The official reason for Eric Young's departure from the contest tonight, a contusion to the neck. It was kind of hard to determine, George, where that ball got him. Yep. Obviously, the, the throw from Chris Ionetta got him in the neck. Johnny Herrera's in there. Keith Duggar's had a busy day. Rocky's very fortunate to have the preeminent training staff in baseball. <laughs> Keith and Scotty Garrett. Tom Probst, who uh, used to be the head trainers. Tom's in charge of, what's Tom's exact title? In charge of all medical. Uh, yeah. A anything anything having to do with uh, the injuries, the medical side of things. I'll have to grab the media guide. Say exactly what the title is, but TP does a terrific job. Scotty Moriyama on the rehab well, that's side. Kind of, I get what I say. That's kind of the guy that nobody really talks an awful lot about because he's kind of behind the scenes type guy, and, and he's one of those guys that uh, you know somebody gets hurt. Jeff Francis, or Taylor Buckles when he was here, uh, Eric Cook. He's the guy that does all the rehabbing and getting those guys back on the field. Yeah, director, everybody's out on the road. Director George of Medical Operations. That's the title now for TP. This ball's going to find an opening, and you know what? That was one of those ones, George, where I think the shift hurt the team employing it because Johnny Herrera thought Chulowitzki had it, didn't want to run into him, so he kind of froze, and it was a tweener. Yeah, it sure was. You can see everybody set to the right side there, and then when this ball's hit, he kind of froze on looking at it. He almost looks like he put his hands on his knees at second base and didn't make a move on the baseball because he did think Tula Whiskey was going to get to it. He doesn't. Huff comes up with his third hit of the ball game. Huff with a couple of singles and his 25th home run back in the third. Put the Giants on top, 3-2 to two in this game. Here's the former Florida State All-American Buster Posey. And that pitch outside, ball one. You know, Scotty Moriyama spends all the spring training in in Tucson next year it'll be Phoenix and then he's down there for extended spring for another couple of months working with guys that couldn't head north whether it be big league guys or minor league guys there was a lot there's there's always a few where there's sport there will be injury Two and the count on Posey, a walk and a fly ball to left field. And a base hit. Well, maybe not. How about no. that play by Tulowitzki? I spoke too fast. Your base hit 5 6 3. An impressive side of this. When that ball came off the glove of Melvin Moore, you know it's going to have some spin on it. Tuna Whiskey goes and grabs this thing barehanded and makes the play. Soft liner off the glove, and then Tuna Whiskey comes over into the hole barehanded, and Buster Posey can't believe it. He's out by a long shot. What a play by Tuna Whiskey. Off oh, the bat, this, off the this, bat, he thinks he's got to hit the left field. Yeah, is that fun to watch? Need any more evidence for a gold glove? Yeah, more than anything, it's just his baseball instincts. And this is going to drop around third comes Hoff. He'll score. It's silver run by Stoborz. And Burl will go to second, and the Giants have a 4-2 to two lead. It'll be an error on Stoborz, allowing Burl to go to second. Burl will get an RBI. I think even if Spilly comes up with that cleanly, 
with two outs Huff who runs pretty well is going to score. Yeah, I'd agree with you. I think he would have. It's a soft liner and that's why it, it doesn't really matter at that point off the end of the bat of Burl. And as he starts to take off Spilly looks up just a little bit on trying to check the runner and see where Huff is because Huff with that leg hasn't run as well. And the Rockies knew that. So Spielberg was going to try to scoop and throw in all one motion and unfortunately comes up with the air. And for Spilly, it's just his fourth error of the season. Jose Guillen. Trend that's killing the Rockies, George, the last week or so. It's not so much a big inning where they, you know, you, you give up four or five. It's every inning there's traffic. And, and tonight, for example, the Giants scored a run in the first. They got two in the third. And now they've got another run here in the fifth. And you remember the, the Arizona series? In the final ball game in Arizona when the Rockies lost 10 to 9 despite that furious comeback. The Diamondbacks scored in each of the last six innings that they hit. The third through the eighth and in the first two innings they were retired with two men on base each inning. Well the one thing I'll say is uh, last year the Rockies had Matt, a healthy Matt Daly. And he was so valuable to the team. Because he worked that fourth through seventh inning and he really maintained everything. He'd come in with traffic on base, ground ball, double play, and give that offense a chance to work back in. And he worked very quick innings. Unfortunately, he's been in and injured, and nobody's kind of stepped into that role of that fourth, fifth, and sixth inning to maintain and keep a ball game where it is, and that's where it gets carried away. And that 4 2 game turns into an 8, eight 2 game real quick. It's something you can't afford to have happen. Strike three on Guillen. That'll put down the inning, but another run for the Giants. Huff brought around on the soft single by Pat Burrow. 4-2 Giants. Weeks ago, so you would assume that trying to get him back into the lineup and, and break him back in slowly. Jonathan Herrera second at bat, one and one. Again, Herrera came in for EY in the second inning. Zito gave up two in the first. Get a ground ball to Freddie Sanchez. Now to bring up Jay Pate. Jay's 0 for 2. Fly ball to center field and pop to shallow left. Gathered in by the shortstop of Rebay. Since that first inning, Zito's allowed a walk to Herrera 
and a soft single by Spielborgs. That's it. It's kind of settled in. When the Rockies score seven or more, you know about our Rockies taco special with Taco Bell. Well, if you want to get word of it, if you're out of earshot, text the keyword TACO to 95323. Peyton drives it to right. Get down the line. Yeah, it'll run to the corner. And Peyton may have an opportunity for three. He will. Here's the throw by Sanchez, and it's a triple with one out for Jay Payton. I tell you what, he almost slowed down. He did slow down at second, thinking that Richie Dyer was going to hold him up at, at second. But as quick as he is, this veteran uh, really cut the back tight, got there well ahead of the throw from right field. He got a strong arm in right field. High heater out of the strike zone. Not a strike, but Peyton drives it into that corner, and then it's just off to the races. Watch when Jay gets to second. He picks up Dyer like you're supposed to. And then he turned it up after slowing him down, and he's able to get into third base safely. And the crowd back alive with Cargo at the plate. First triple this year for Jay Payton since being called up in September, his 30th career triple. And Cargo drops it. Gonzalez is gonna have a triple. It's four to three. Back to back, three baggers. Well, anytime you can start trading places, uh, it gets pretty interesting, and that's what's happened to the Giants. You lead the game now four to three, but you got the two toughest outs, two biggest RBI guys coming to the plate for the Rockies, and Gonzalez has already paid one time with this ball to right center field, just a few feet shy of getting out of the ballpark. The Southwest Sky Cam, it tells you on the outside part of the plate, the arm extension is where it needs to be, and then off of the wall, Cody Ross just came into the ball game. Gian, mm, man, just out of the reach on the Hyundai cam, and you know, gian has got to give chase to retrieve the baseball. Since the break in 52 ball games, Tulo has 56 RBIs and more than likely getting ready to have number 57. Well, this is how you'd like to hit, George, the infield in. A lot of holes. For Tulowitzki to tie up the game. Gonzalez at third with one out. Both those triples on balls probably out of the strike zone. Down low. Shows you how strong again Carlos Gonzalez is. George, that pitch off the plate away, and he hits it 420 feet to right center field. Now Bruce Bochy's making a soft walk out to the mound. Maybe he's seen all he wants. Five hits and three runs by the Rockies so far. And, uh, maybe there's just going to be a conversation out on the mound, but typically when Boach comes out to the mound, there's uh, more than just conversation. There's action. Looks like, yeah, Chris Ray that came over from the Texas Rangers in a trade. How about this in, in mid AB? Well, he just saw everything he wants to see. He said, you know what? It's a 1 0 count. I don't need Tula Whiskey hitting the ball out of the ballpark. Chances of him driving in the run with one out are pretty good. I just want to bring in a hard, hard sinker baller, try to keep the ball on the ground, and hopefully he doesn't let it get out of the yard. So Zito gone after four and a third. Backup triples chase of 4 3 Giants.
Major League Baseball. It's not a club record. That was 61 triples back in 2001. Tonight's call to the bullpen is brought to you by Xfinity Voice. Unlimited local and long distance calling. Call 1-800-XFINITY. Chris Ray throws very hard as George described. Upper 90s. With hard a slider sinker. and an occasional split. Yeah, hard sinker. He's that's not given up a home run. I think that's why Boatsy ran him into the game now. Only 18 hits and 20 in a third innings. He does throw hard, but it's a lot of movement on it. Starts it out with a slider, a hanging slider, up in the zone at 77 miles an hour. And that's a 2-0 count. Keep in mind, because Zito did throw one pitch out of the strike zone. To Tulowitzki. And now they're going to back up the defense, George. This is interesting. Well, I tried to just get the out. And I think that's all they're thinking about. Let's get an out out of this thing. And uh, just give up uh, the one run and let it be tied. I think they feel comfortable right now that they're, they, they're not done scoring with four runs. See if they change it up if they get to a two strike count. Here's the 2 1. High and deep left field. Did you say he hasn't given up a home run? He has to a shot to Lewinsky, and the Rockies lead it 5 to 4. For Tula Whiskey in the month of September. Of September, the bullet power. How do you like that? 27th big fly on Coors Light Cold Hard Blast. He got a high heater and he turned and vented it. George, you and I don't know what's going to happen the rest of this week. But I'll tell you what, you can't find a more entertaining team in baseball. With this one, and this ball is drilled to deep center field, at the base of the wall, more around second, he's hunting a triple, he'll have one easily, third triple in the inning. Cody Ross fell down in center field, that's why Mora was able to get the triple. I don't know what happened to Ross in center, but whatever it was, he bit the dust halfway back on the baseball. Well, how you doing so far, Chris Ray? Home run, triple. About 850 feet of baseballs have been hit off of you so far, but everything's up in the strike zone. Another look at this, and watch Cody Ross. This ball down and away in the outer half of the plate at 92 miles an hour. Good job of hitting it. Take it where it's pitched and do something with it power-wise. And then as Ross goes back, he goes to turn. He just fell down. Bit the dust. And then all of a sudden, gian has got to make the run to go get the baseball. Did he slip or did he uh, maybe get a shoelace tied up in, inside of one of those spikes? But Bruce Boatsy says, you know what? Home run, triple, Chris Ray, take a shower. I'm going to get somebody else out of the bullpen. Loto's rocking right now. The Rockies up 5-4.
with his third triple with, with the third triple for the Rockies in the inning. And the new pitcher is Dan Runsler. On the DL for a while this year, limited to 39 ball games. Very good fastball. Help hit help. Yep, yep sure they got him. He brought him in, the lefty to face the lefty, and the first thing he does is hit somebody, and Bruce Bochy can't be happy about that. Barely next, Todd Helton caught the jersey. Or did it? I ain't got his elbow, George. Grazed him. First and third, Spillboards, a single his last time up. Spillboards well over 300 in the second half this year. Ball one, overshadowed by Carlos Gonzalez, who's hit 376 in the second half. And after that triple, it's gone up. Sulewitzki's had a great second half also. Mullet power. 15 home runs in the month of September for the Rocky shortstop. We always talk about the uh, hitters that have an extended career over a period of time. You look on the back of the baseball card at the start of the year and you say, what's their average? You look up, Spilly's career average 282, and he's now sitting at 285. All those guys have come back to that career number. They are what they are, and Spilly's a, a very good hitter. Two and two. Peyton got it going with a triple to right. Zito was in a good place when the inning started. Runs are able to get the second out. Striking out Spielborg, so that'll bring up Ionetta. Well, just good heat running away from a right-handed hitter and had good velocity behind it at 94 miles an hour. Difficult when you're heading the count to try to do a whole lot with that. Chris Nelson has come out on deck to hit for Hamill. If Ionetta can keep the inning going. Runsler has a special arm, George. He does. He has a great arm. I mean, it's one of those guys that when healthy is as nasty as you want to have coming out of the bullpen from the left side. It's just been a health issue this year for him. Heat again at 95, 0 and 2. Ionetta nearly hit one out his last time up. Andres Torres made a great running catch. He ran into the wall in extreme right center field. Ionetta, the eighth man to hit for the Rockies in the inning. Herrera grounded second, and then Peyton tripled. Gonzalez tripled. Tulowitzki two run home run. Melvin Moore a triple. So four straight hits, three triples and a bomb. Fouled off out of play. With three triples, as you saw in the graphic, ties a Rockies record. 14th time they've had three triples in a game. I don't know if they've ever had three in an inning. That's, it's hard to figure right off the, uh, it's not something you have in the media guide quickly at your disposal. Three triples in the inning. Three triples within four hitters. One and two on Chris. Another uh, note for you this, with the 15 home runs hit by Troy Tulowitzki in the month of September, only Babe Ruth and Albert Bell, Hank Greenberg, and Ralph Kiner have ever hit more in a month. This is a ground ball to third. It's a foul ball. 
Ruth at 27. Albert Bell, who we just saw on the road. Albert was down in Phoenix. He had 17 in 1995. Hank Greenberg, as you look at this ball. Greenberg hit 16 in 1946. Ralph Kiner, 16 in 1949. Greenberg and Mark McGuire on two occasions also hit 15 in the month of September. And a line drive to Ronnie. It'll get down. Rohr scores. Help the second. Chris Iannetta makes it six to four. Outstanding at bat for Iannetta. Gets a slap on the back from Glenn Allen Hill. Fastball down and in. As it came into him, you just see him drop the head of the bat, and it's all strength Iannetta. Line drive into right center field. That's a pretty good job of hitting. Very good fastball and a cut at the last second to get it into the opposite field. Guillen not able to make a play on it, but he is able to prevent Helton from advancing. The Rockies have now hit around here in the fifth inning. Chris Nelson will pinch hit for Jason Hamill. Hamill is now on the plus side because of this Rockies rally. Chris Ray has the hook. Ray faced two hitters. He gave up a two-run home run and a triple. Both runners have scored. This will be an interesting at bat as we learn a little bit more about the Rockies' former number one pick. Chris Nelson facing a guy who throws very hard. Just the 12th at bat for Nelson. September, he's been three for six with runners in scoring position this year. You had any opportunities? First one. Good time to capitalize, right? He's five for 11, so when he's been given a rare opportunity, he's come through. He stole a big base, George, not too long ago. Well, as a pinch hitter, he's done pretty well. He's four for eight so far. Let me double check that. Four for seven. 571 average as a pinch hitter. One, two. Did a good job getting the barrel of that. That pitch was uh, pitch up in the zone. A lot of times you see hitters swing through that when you have that kind of velocity at 94. Tough to get on top of it and he doesn't get on top. Just got under it a little bit to stay alive. <laughs> Runsler strikes out Nelson in the inning. The Rockies score four times as they hit around. And they now lead the Giants 6-4. to four. Jay Payton got it started. Carlos Gonzalez, Melvin Moore, and triples.
saving money on E470. Do it today. Tomorrow afternoon, we'll close out the season series with the Giants. The Dodgers will come in on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And then the Cardinals, four games to conclude the regular season. The Rockies need to be awfully special over these next nine. They've put themselves in a bit of a hole with this five-game losing streak. That's to say the least. Esmil Rogers on for the 26th time. And he'll begin with Juan Uribe, who's 0 for 2 in the ball game. Right, he's got to give you two innings here and allow you to get into that seventh inning. He needs a clean sixth and seventh inning. And then you can go to the Belial Betancourt Street uh, formula to try to keep this ball game and win this game. Hamill went five innings. He's on the plus side. He gave up four runs on eight hits. Walked one, struck out three, and this is going to drop in center field for a base hit. I'll bring up Mike Fontenot. Well, remember to vote for the top memorable moment this season that you'd like to see replayed during the Rockies postgame report this coming Sunday. Text your vote to 95323. Giambi's walk-off against the Red Sox is play one, play two for Smith's walk-off against the Cardinals. And play three for Ubaldo Jimenez's no-hitter in Atlanta. Those are your three choices. And you can see that tomorrow again during the post-game report. Up the middle and under the glove of Johnny Herrera. Uribe will stop at second base. So Rogers gives up back to back singles. And that will allow Runzler. Is it Runzler coming up? Ishak. Ishikawa. No, it's Ishikawa. Okay. Apodaca is going to go out. I thought for a moment because it was a potential sacrifice situation that Bochi was going to allow. Well, unfortunately. Pitcher, but Runzler doesn't. He doesn't even get a chance to sacrifice well, much. That's right. And he's a reliever, and a lot of times he doesn't get to, so that's why he's not going to get the opportunity. They'll go ahead and go to the other side of their bullpen with all the call ups in September. Hey, September 29th is Fan Appreciation Day. Select the uh, fans at the ball game will win prizes, so make sure you come out against the Dodgers. It's an afternoon ball game, starts at 110. And, uh, Fan Appreciation Day. Uh, Kind of a way for the organization and the players to give back to these wonderful fans here in the Rocky Mountains. Now the left-hander Bimel is going down for the Rockies. Uh, it's something that you tried to get some things going as quick as you could, as you saw who was being set up. But the hits happened very quickly in a span of five, five pitches. They have runners at first and second, and nobody out. Casilla, the hard-thrown right-hander for the Giants, is getting loose. He'll come in to pitch the sixth inning. For the Giants. Travis Ishikawa, who celebrated his 27th birthday yesterday, at the plate with nobody out in the top of the sixth inning. Ten hits now for the Giants. 0 oh 1. Esmil Rogers, youngest of five boys in his family. His two older brothers who played professionally. One's a hitting coach now. He's telling me the story yesterday, George, when he got called in in the Dominican Summer League at the end of the year, and he wasn't hitting that well, and he was afraid he was getting released. And they said, you're going to continue on. He said, really? Said, yeah, you're going to throw a bullpen tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, it worked out for him. And he worked quickly, George, because he, he never threw, as you look at Bimel and Dotel getting loose, he never threw in a ball game in the Dominican. They liked so much the Rockies did what he did in his bullpen sessions. They sent him to Casper the well, next year. And that's the first time he ever part, pitched in a ball game. Part of the reason for that, too, is the fact he adjusted. Uh, been in pro oh, man, you got to be kidding me. That's going to score a run. 
mean, that that looked like a slice backhand. 6 5. Travis Ishikawa. A little Rafael Nadell. Boy, just dropped the head of the bat down. That's basically all he did. Not a full swing at all. Just kind of flipped it down on the ground and able to, to, to flare this thing out over the head of Melvin Mora. And he got a rebate to score. So now nine pitches into this inning. Rogers has given up three hits and a run. Cody Ross up for the first time. The eye dotted there in San Francisco on the Hyundai cam. I mean, he's trying to bump this thing. Luckily, uh, he got back out of the way of that. Yeah, the base is loaded. Freddie Sanchez, I tell you, it's dangerous at bat in the on deck circle for the Giants just because he's a tough guy to strike out, a guy with a little bit of pop. We've seen it. Pitch run inside again to go 3 and 0. Found the strike zone yet against Cody Ross. Everything up and everything in. I don't know how much of it is physical, George, but a lot of it's I, mental. I, I, I think the Rockies, for whatever reason, here in the latter part of September, they're by and large their pitching staff has shown signs of some form of fatigue. Well, right? whether I mean, it's physical or mental, the the results are not. What they've been for a good portion of the year. Think about it. I mean, Bimel's uh, or Belial's led the league in innings pitched, and Betancourt's kind of the same thing. But Bimel, those three guys, the fearless three, have pitched an awful lot of innings and a lot of appearances. That doesn't include the times up and down and not in a ball game. It will take the wear and tear on you by the end of the season. That's why the Rockies lucky to get the hotel with 15 days to go to maybe take a little of that workload off in situations just like these. Three and one on Cody Ross. High fly ball to left field and deep. Three run home run for Cody Ross. And the Giants have the lead right back eight to six. Second home run for Ross in a Giant uniform. Six RBIs now, but gave a total of 13 on the season and 64 total. But his impact with the Giants will be felt here on this night at Coors Field more than any other time so far in a Giant uniform. A deep high fly ball to left field on a 3-1 count on a ball out over the middle of the plate from Ishmael Rogers. Slider to Sanchez, no swing, ball one. Take a look at the Amika hit zone on Freddie Sanchez. Amika, it's not how you're covered, it's how you're treated. We'll show you right after this pitch. 2 0. Oh. Rogers uh, struggling with his command. Right, you see that hard sinker down and in right here really starts to eat him up. But man, you get a ball elevated on him, he's going to hurt you. Alvin is elevated, it's going to hurt you. going to be extra bases. Billboard's nice job cutting this baseball off, but Freddie's going to get into second base. And Jim Tracy's going to have to go get Rogers. 
Three singles, a three-run home run, and a double. The lead of two is gone. And the Giants up by two, threatening for more. Nobody out here in the sixth inning. You want to put down inning. The Rockies got anything but that. Tough outing for us, Mill Rogers, the kid out of the Dominican. to keep it from going to the outfield and it's redirected to Lewinsky and he throws out Buster Posey by two steps. Looks like freeze camp. Nifty play. Rockies need some nifty pitching. They haven't gotten it much of late. Saved the ball game by Shasin yesterday. Joe yeah. Bimel on for the 70th time this year. Yeah, looking to get this last out or trying to get an A out. I not last out, but the first out. Here in the bottom of the or top of the sixth inning. Bimel making his 70th appearance for the Rockies. And Aubrey Huff hangs in well against lefties. He takes a strike. Huff is at 288 this year, left on left. A little bit better than his 284 average against righties. Seven of his 25 home runs, actually 26 now. He hit one earlier. Come against lefties. He's three for three tonight. Ray Sanchez at second. He just doubled. 8 6 San Francisco. George, I said this earlier. You look up on the board now. One in the first for the Giants. Two in the third. One in the fifth. And four here in the sixth inning after the Rockies had the place rocket. They scored four in the bottom of the fifth. They take a two run lead. Everybody's excited. Get three outs. Go back to the dugout. Well, that's what you're hoping you were going to get out of Rogers. Unfortunately, 14 pitches later, it's four runs and five hits. And you'd really like to see Bimel handle Huff here and get that first out because Huff has had success against him. Three for seven with a home run. That's cooled off Philadelphia one five to two. Pirates one. Tampa's got a game and a half lead now in the American League East on the Yankees. We'll go down to Sunday it looks like. Comebacker and it's going to be a tough chance no chance. Got under the glove of Joe Bible. And it's an infield hit for Aubrey Huff. That is six straight hits to begin the inning for San Francisco. Yeah, Huff's four for four. Yeah, three singles and a home run for Huff. That ball uh, shattered, and then Bimel not able to make it. Tracy trying to stop the bleeding. He'll go get the right-hander, Dotel, to come on and face Posey, Burl, and Guillen. Three right-handers that are coming up in a row. 
off the end of the bat, shattered it. And then Bimel on the Hyundai can Watch how he tries to go get this baseball, but because his momentum goes here, he wasn't able to get back over and catch the baseball. Just nicked the glove. Johnny Herrera didn't have a choice. Buster Posey will be coming up, and Octavio Dotel will go to the hill. Octavio Dotel, that's his work this year between three ball clubs Pittsburgh, Los Angeles, as in the Dodgers, and now the Colorado Rockies. Yeah, and then he's got to come in here now. I mean, he's got to get busy and be able to shut some things down for the Rockies. Slider strike one off Posey. Hamill went five innings, allowed four runs on eight hits, walked one, struck out three. Now Posey turned to Pearl and wanted to know what Dotel throws and how the action would be because he's never faced Dotel. Two sliders in a row, the count's even at one and one. Now Burl had struggled against Dotel in his career. He's two for nine. Two and one. That's one of the most impressive things about Buster Posey for me, George, is his plate discipline. He doesn't chase a lot, does he? I mean, he's got a strike zone he tries to live by. If it's away from him and down, he's going to right field. If it's in, he's proven to baseball he can pull the ball. First came up, he didn't have much of success pulling the baseball. I think he was trying to feel his way through and. Once he felt comfortable, though, things started to change. That's obvious. 16 home runs now in the season. Tied for sixth most in a rookie in the uniform of the Giants. Two two. And this ball's well hit right center field. Cargo lays up. It amazes you, folks. You get to watch this kid every single night, whether it's left field, right field, center field, or at home plate. Every night's like a highlight reel, and it's another shot of a great catch. A ball moving away from him. His timing and the ability to time it and leap at the same time and be parallel to the ground and catch the baseball. Standing ovation, deservedly so here at Coors Field for this young outfielder. They put his image up as he walked back to his position on the big screen in left center field and as George described 
And I think it's a sellout. It's very close. All stood. And it gave him a well deserved ovation. You will not see a better catch than that going alley to alley. Moving up was Freddie Sanchez. It's first and third with Pat Burl at the plate. That's what it took to get the first out of the inning. That was a nasty cutter down and away by a swing and a miss by Totel. One more look at this great catch. See, it's not so much that he just ran to the spot. It's the ability to time that leap and be able to get parallel, reach out, and catch the baseball. Let's see it real speed, and, and as we watch it real speed, George, let me ask you again, what can he do in a baseball game? That's the greatest thing about him. He steals bases, he swings the ball, makes plays like this. Who's to say he's not going to be given a gold glove along with maybe that MVP trophy? Well, the, the tell just threw a wild pitch, and the run scores, making it 9-6. to six. Sanchez scores on the wild pitch. Huff. Moves to second. Now, Hart's fastball that just cut off of the glove, nowhere near the area of where Chris Ionetta anticipated the throw. Tough ball to try to catch. Popped up. Spillboard's in right. And all five runs are going to be end up being charged to Rogers in this inning. Yeah, that, that's as ugly a line as you can have. He faced five hitters, and all of them got hits, and all of them scored. He's got a very bright future. He had a bad night. Two outs, Jose Guillen at the plate. Guillen 0 for 3. A couple of strikeouts. in the sixth, then they have to play catch up again. Could have been worse if not for that wonderful play by Car Carlo Gonzalez.
the sixth after the Rockies hit around in the bottom of the fifth. This game in stark contrast to the ball game we saw last night, a 2-1 to one win for the Giants. Let's check in again with Mark Stout. Mark? Thank you, guys. Spent some time with Cody Ross during BP today. He loves Denver for a number of reasons. He's from New Mexico. His brother, Stephen, has lived here for more than a decade. He's a radiologist, so he visits all the time and said he and his wife may be down the road after baseball. Scottsdale in the winter, Denver in the summer may make this his home. He also loves hitting here, and he hit that three-run homer. Not a surprise. Came into this game with a 310 average at Coors Field. Told me he loves the backdrop. I asked him about other parks. He said Atlanta and Arizona. A lot of people say Arizona, and specifically because of the straight backdrop. Nothing on a slant, nothing on an angle, no reflections. He loves it. He also said he loves fielding here, but he had a tough time the bottom half of last inning. We'll see what he can do. But Cody Ross, very familiar with Denver and also enjoying the NL West. Guys? It's hard to catch Rockets. Nate Shearholtz is in right field. Double switch. Santiago Casilla, who's been really good, is now on the hill. And at the plate, Jonathan Herrera. Rockies trying to restart their offense. Herrera is 0 for 1 in a walk since coming on in the second inning for Eric Young, who was banged up in the first inning. And Casilla, one of those guys with a great arm. First offering to Johnny Herrera, 97. He's going to try to do what Rodgers uh, could not do, and that is buy that one inning. They get farther along into the game, and so they can get to the bullpen area they want to be in with the lead. Jay Payton on deck, then Carlos Gonzalez. Seven mile an hour heater and a leadoff double for Herrera. And you know what? It just may be one of those nights at Coors Field. 97 miles an hour is hit right by Huff at first base. You just don't anticipate a guy taking that fastball and doing that with it at 97. Good job by John. Peyton started the rally last inning with a triple to right. One for three in the contest. Casilla has been unscored upon 22 of his last 24, covering 28 in the third innings. An 0.95 ERA during that span. And a base hit to right. Herrera had to see it through. So he'll stop at third. And now the tying run coming up. In the person at number five. Let's take a look at our Colorado Mining Association. It involves number five. Bases loaded down in the desert the other night. Rockies down by six. Not anymore. They close to within two. First career grand slam for Little Pony. What's the fastest growing fuel for electricity generation in the world? It's coal and it's mined in Colorado. That's from the Colorado Mining Association. We had a conference on the mound. They reminded Santiago Casilla that the guy coming up is a really good hitter. Well, they said and talked about it. Said, you know what? Go right at him. Don't walk and start getting yourself into more and more trouble. Two uh, guys, uh, Peyton and Huff at first base, talking about Jay's success. A couple of hits, a triple and a single tonight. I don't think Casilla, he can do it. He can punch somebody out. But with that type of a fastball, a lot of times you have a little bit of elevated swing and make solid contact. You could send it for a ride. Gonzalez tripled his last at bat. He almost hit that out. He had a line shot to center for a single in the first. 
Two runs scored. He's two for three. The average at 342, leading the National League. I tell you now, hitters like to face guys, even though it's 95 to 97 miles an hour. But it's straight. So now it's all about timing and hitting the trigger a little early on getting the bat to the zone. Maybe to face one of those guys and some guy coming in with a hard slider or split finger, some kind of a trick pitch. Two and one. And this car go back pedals out of the batter's box. And a slider at 83, and it wasn't very thrown very well. It's thrown poorly. Red right out of the hay. Nine six Giants. And that's fouled off. Gonzalez with the RBI in his last at bat now has 114. Well, Roberto Kelly, who is their first base coach outfield guy, he's been kind of moving their outfield around. And again, though, when you got a guy like Casillo on the mound, typically hard thrower, not a control command guy. Best breaking ball he's throwing the whole time at 84 power curveball. Who holds earlier today drove in a run. And a 7 3 Cardinal loss. He has 113 RBIs. Gonzalez leading the National League with 114. First and third. Here's the 2 2. Three and two to Lewitsky on deck. Glenn Allen Hill is running over to tell Jay Payton something. You know, not whispering, and Aubrey Huff's right there also. It wasn't a private type of conversation. Three and two on cargo. Might have to back out on him. There he goes. Take a the pace of the game to you. The Lyles warming up for the Rockies, more than likely coming on to pitch the seventh. Round ball, and there's one, and the first, they're going to get the double play. That was a very nice play by Mike Fontenot. The Rockies get a run, 9-7, no ribby there. Gonzalez upset as he spiked the helmet. He, he was telling the first base umpire, John Hirschbeck, he's not mad at him, he's mad at himself. Yeah, he is, because he did not, not able to come through with a base hit and extend the inning. That ball got rid of very quickly by Fontenot and Sanchez to turn the double play. And again, it's just kind of one of those deals. When you put your expectations where this young man puts his, it's hard to live to that every day. Very disappointed in not driving in uh, both of those runs. Tulowitzki, two outs, nobody on, 9-7. Troy in his last at bat, a two-run bomb to left. Well, the Rockies have seven runs. Don't forget to go to Taco Bell tomorrow between 4 and 6 to get your Rockies taco special. Troy with 15 September home runs. The next best... Individual performance in the month of September 2010. Jose Batista with nine. The Toronto Blue Jay has had a breakout year. 52 home runs. Man. 
career high prior to this year, 16 for Batista. And that's a base hit. On a 99 mile an hour fastball, to the whiskey just took it right back up the middle. A lot of signs talking about the power of the mullet, the magic of the mullet. Melvin Mora, since the break, has hit 306 with five home runs and 28 RBIs. Double and a triple in three trips tonight for Melvin. going to go unnoticed. I tell you now, I mean, San Francisco is going to use, as Jim Tracy will, whatever they can to get through this ball game. Jeremy Affelt's warming up in case they get to help. Ramon Ramirez is warming up. Ugly slider at 90 just had a little bit of late cut on it and got called a strike as you look at the bullpen of the Giants. Going to cut right at the last second, not necessarily where everybody wanted it. It's just kind of it wasn't caught very well by Posey, so you see a little disagreement out of everyone, including Mora. Down low, two and two. Melvin fouls it off. Repair that chip in your windshield now. Call Safe Light Auto Glass at 303 287 5000 or go to safelight.com. When you throw hard the way Casilla does sometimes, that what happens on the breaking ball, you try to overpower it all the time and throw it extremely hard. And what you do is obviously you don't have the command of the pitch, and, and again, you're not finishing it out front. It's all a big power uh, type delivery, and it doesn't allow you to, to have the proper arm angle or rotation of the arm to put it where you need to. And this is popped up shallow right center field. Chihuahua will make the catch in the inning. The Rockies get a run. Herrera comes around after leading the inning off with a double. It's nine to seven.
a solo home run against Jason Hamill. Rockies would take a two to one lead, went back and forth, and the Cardinals would set the side of the launch triple. One of three triples in the inning for the Rockies as they score four in the bottom of the fifth, took a 6 4 lead. But then it was an ugly sixth inning. Esmo Rogers gave up five straight hits to begin the inning, including a three run home run to Cody Ross. It is 9 7 right now on our Cooney Lexus look back. We're Check out Cooney Lexus where luxury has an address in Littleton on South Broadway. Matt Belial on for the 73rd time this year. He has had a terrific season. He has been utilized quite a bit. And as you can see, he's closing in on 90 relief innings, Frazier. 90 relief innings, but 89 strikeouts. Just think of the numbers the other day. As you looked at Betancourt, it was only eight walks. For Raphael Betancourt on the season, and Betancourt had thrown 58 innings. Well, Belial's thrown 88 and two thirds and walked 16 and struck out 81. It has been an impressive year for this right-hander out of the bullpen. Maribes one for three in the ball game. Here's the 0-1. He's going to be one for four in one, two seconds. I'm going to bring up Mike Fontenot. Well, they made the double switch, so the pitcher will not hit third in the inning. Nate Sherrills will hit in the nine hole now. Fontenot's got two hits tonight. Takes a ball. That's why San Francisco is where they are. Tied with the Padres atop the National League West. Great pitching all year. And how about the month of September? Their staff coming into the ball game. They've gotten touched up for seven runs tonight. But George coming into the ball game, they'd allowed 30 runs in 187 innings in the month of September. Their pen in September had allowed two runs. In 51 innings, the league was hitting 122 against their bullpen this month. Two outs. Uh, to bring up another side of that, I mean they have gone uh, 18 ball games now. You see Jeremy Affelt warming up. He'll come on to face Todd Helton to start the bottom of the seventh. But their ball club, three runs or fewer allowed. In a single season, they've done it 18 times. They're just one behind the Giants in 1916. The leader with 20 in 1917 was the White Sox. So in the modern era of baseball, you know, they've been the best uh, right now. The, the closest anywhere near that was 1972. The Indians at 16. They have 18 games on the season with three or fewer runs. Well, eight, 18 in a row until yep. tonight. That is amazing what they've done. Sherwoods hits this ball to deep right center field, and Spielborg makes the catch right in front of the wall. So it turns into a 1 2 3 inning for Matt Belial. 9 7, stretch time at Coors Field.
Rocky Mountain. Be a good matchup for the Ducks and the Devils tonight. Oh, we got to update our break, breaks plus poll of the game. Do you like the division series being just five games, best out of five? Or do you think, along the lines that I do, that if you get to the postseason, it ought to be seven games? See, George, we persuaded them. 64% think it should go to seven games. Well, maybe one day. Thanks for voting, as always, on our Breaks Plus poll of the game. Todd Helton will lead things off. He'll get Jeremy Affeld, his former teammate. And Affeld has not pitched as well this year as he did a year ago, but he's battled injuries more than once this year. Early, uh, late August, had to go down to San Jose, make a couple of starts, rehab starts. He'll get a ground ball right at Sanchez to lead off the game here in the seventh. Just got an update, another update on an injury, George, from the Giants clubhouse this time. Andres Torres making his first start since that emergency appendectomy a couple of weeks ago was removed from the ball game because he was feeling discomfort on his left side. So, understandable. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you know the kid wants to play. Sure he does. Sometimes. And be cautious. One out, Spielborg's at the plate. Dodgers are heading into town for those final three ball games. So get your tickets for that last series here at Coors Field. 1 800 388 Rock or go to Colorado Rockies.com. Ball and a strike. Again, the Padres won earlier, four to three. Walk-off fashion against the Reds at Petco. So they're in a tie with the Giants atop the NL West and atop the wild card. Two and one. Rockies trailing by four and a half. And they're trailing in this ball game. Nine to seven with one out in the seventh. 14 hits for the Giants, 11 for the Rockies. The Rockies have committed two errors. Funny how things change. And one guy sees another guy do something. He says, "You know, I'm going to do that. I feel more comfortable doing that because watching baseball growing up in the '70s, George, I never remember on a comeback or a guy running over and underhanding it. Maybe, yeah, I, that, maybe that, I don't remember correctly, well, but I, I never, I don't remember seeing it much. Yeah, some guys do it, some guys don't. Other guys more comfortable just taking the ball and going over there because they can't throw the ball to first base. Uh, they said for whatever reason, they throw that ankle biter or they throw one that Will Chamberlain couldn't catch." More guys now do it the way Affel just did it, grabbing it and firing. I know he managed fires it. He fires it sidearm. One and one on Chris Ionetta. RBI single in the fifth. Rockies down by two runs, but they have to have this game. And therefore, it's Rafael Betancourt. He's firing in the Rockies' bullpen. Don't ordinarily see Betancourt unless it's even or the Rockies are leading. Ian Stewart in the on deck circle if Chris Ionetta gets aboard. Three two, or excuse me, the two two pitch is in there for a strike three, and that's all for the Rockies in the seventh inning. Affelt retires them in order. Giants leading nine seven at Coors Field.
rebuilt your workplace. A lot of numbers up there as compared to last night. 16 combined runs, just three last night. 25 combined hits, just five last night. Barry Zito only lasted four and a third. He gave up four runs. Hamill was on the plus side for a little bit, but then the bullpen gave it back. Four home runs in the game for the Giants. Sanchez, Torres, and Huff solo home runs. Ross's was a three-run home run. The Rockies had three triples in the fifth inning. Five lead changes. We go to the eighth. Rafael Betancourt is aboard with the score 9-7 San Francisco. And it's Cody Ross, Freddie Sanchez, and Aubrey Huff. Well, he will. He's making again. We talked about the walk strikeout ratio of Matt Belial, 81 and 16. Well, this one's one step better, a whole lot better, 86 and 8. I mean, it's amazing what these two guys have done in the seventh and eighth inning to give the Rockies chances to win these ball games. First pitch to Cody Ross is a slider out of the zone, ball one. There's a strike, one and one. You're talking about that September ERA for San Francisco. Coming into the ball game, it was 117, which is ridiculously good. The next lowest ERA, the Angels in September, 229. I mean, more than a run higher. Center field, in front of the track, the car goes down. Bring up Freddie Sanchez. Well, the Rockets Conference Center is uh, available for game days or non-game day meetings. You, know, I mean, you can come anytime you want to. Just call 303 Rockies. It holds groups 25 to 200. Sanchez, two for four, home run and a double. He has scored a couple of runs. And he hits a high fly ball to right. Now to bring up Aubrey Huff, who's had a perfect night. He's four for four. Single, home run, single, infield single. Raised the average to 289. On the corner for a strike. Let's take a look and see what the fourth strike zone says. Wally Bell, you missed it, but we'll take it. Here's the 0 1, and it's on the ground at 2 Lewitsky. Let's we'll circle it. And 2 3 inning for Rafael Betancourt. First time the Rockies have gotten off tonight. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Rockies trailing by two runs. Pinch hitter and then the top of the order.
Jeremy Affel has warmed up. And Dexter Fowler now being announced. See if Bruce Bochy stays with Affel. Well, usually he'll go to Romo and Javier Lopez of late to pitch the eighth inning. But I think Jeremy Affel was very aggressive, and that's where he pitched a year ago. So he'll take a shot at Fowler. I think the reason being, too, uh, he'll flip him over to the right side for Fowler and Herrera. But if a guy gets on, he can utilize their, his move to first base. There's Emmanuel Burris. He's come in at second base for Freddy Sanchez. Dexter shows bunt. Side of the Rockies bullpen, Dotel, Belial and Bettencourt retired nine in a row to keep this opportunity presented for the Rockies and Bruce Bochy is going to the bullpen. So the former big league catcher takes the baseball, one of his big bits from Jeremy Affeld. And Sergio Romo is going to jog in. From the giant bullpen. 9 7 San Francisco. Fowler aboard. Nobody out in the eighth inning. Gio Romo. It'll be the 64th appearance for Romo. And like so many of the guys, the Giants trot out of the bullpen. <laughs> the opposition has not hit for a lofty average against him. Romo's uh, just 207. Well, he strikes out a lot of guys, too. I think that's part of it. He's a strike thrower. He doesn't walk people. He's going to force you to put the ball in play. Lefties have had more success though, 246 versus righties at 186. Well, this is his eighth inning guy though. This is the one guy he'll go to. Now he does have Javier Lopez warming up. And obviously that's if you get to Gonzalez. And the one thing I'll say about that, I remember Javier in a Pittsburgh uniform, but the third deck got a visit from a baseball off the bat of Gonzalez against Lopez. Two on Herrera, who doubled his last time up. Jay Payton on deck. Jay's got a couple of hits, single and a double tonight. Time since Houston Street's been in a ball game, which is not a typical during a stretch of losing. The Rockies have lost five in a row. The street is up right now, and it will handle the ninth inning. Rock 
Lefties again down by two here in the eighth. Strike three on the outside corner. Well, that's really what he could do. And, I, and again, Wally Bell's had somewhat of an up and down night as a home plate umpire. He's expanded, he's closed down. This time he expanded, and it's well out of the strike zone. Tracy's going to play the Jason Giambi card right here. And it's the time. I mean, you know, you don't know if you'll get the opportunity in the ninth. And it's going to be against Brian Wilson. Uh, you know, that's the problem. Now you're going to get Javier Lopez. Here comes Javier Lopez. And, and believe me, this was anticipated by Jim Tracy. And by Tracy and uh, Bochy probably the same way. I mean, these are two very astute managers. And when that chess game starts from the seventh inning on, uh, it's a game to watch. I'll tell you that. Nine seven San Francisco one out Dexter Fowler at first base the former Rocky Javier Lopez is aboard to face Jason Giambi and then Carlos Gonzalez shift is on and the inside corner for a strike Giambi appeared last night and grounded out to end the ball game against Brian Wilson a two to one San Francisco victory. Lopez in because he sweeps the slider from that low angle down underneath and when he does that if he doesn't spin it correctly he can hang it and get hit a mile and a half. Man, that happened there it just got a little bit quick it hung but uh, Jason got quick with the trigger and jerked it foul. Since becoming a giant uh, Lopez has been special 079. But the opposition is hit. An earned run average of 104 in 23 ball games. Good job by Giambi because that was not an easy pitch to waste. 76 mile an hour frisbee that you just try to throw the bat at to keep your bat alive. It was elevated, so that helped a little bit from Giambi's perspective. It looks like George, by the time he releases the ball, he's throwing from where the second baseman is normally positioned. Watch where he steps and watch where the arm. Hobby 6'4. Well, it's just a, they call these guys a sidearm crossfire, is what it is, because he steps so far like Drew's talking about. But, uh, you know, he's, he's going to step right in this action, and then the arm's going to sweep around this way to the plate. 
and Giambi waste that one. Good job by Jason Giambi. Okay, this is what we're talking about right here. I mean, he's really low to the ground, hides the ball extremely well, and then you know, here comes that big whip around this way, and that's why it's hard to follow through with it. Outside, two and two. Lopez and his wife, they make their home in the Denver metro area in the offseason. Fowler at first, 9-7, San Francisco in the eighth. Yeah, that, that's something you didn't see much out of Lopez when he was in a Rockies uniform. That's what, He wanted to strike out there. He wanted to throw that for a strike. And one sidearm, look at his arm angle, it's going to be on top. Well, you're not going to see it in this replay. You see that it's off the plate on the side of the Southwest Sky, Sky Camp. That was 91 miles an hour. And his arms elevated to a low three quarters. There's a base hit right center field. Fowler to third. Richie will hold it there. First and third, one out. And the go ahead run coming up at Carlos Gonzalez. Great AB from Giambi. Yeah, that's the value of Jason Giambi. He's going to get pinch ran for by Clint Barmas, who will then go in to play second base. No, he won't. Herrera's already at second. Excuse me. Utilizing the speed and experience of Barmas, though, on the base pack. And having a guy like Giambi around, it allows him to, to do just this. I mean, a guy made a career hitting home runs and line drives, and he comes in in big, big situations, and he rises to those situations. He did here. But Giambi does his job. And here's Gonzalez. Two for four, a triple and a single. 114th RBI on the triple. Bell looked at it. Said it was off the plate. 1-0. Oh. Gonzalez, one for four. That uh, one hit, a big home run. Mentioned earlier, off the third deck. Here at Coors Field. Here's the 1 0. <laughs> to Lewitsky on deck. Outfield very deep. Infield looking for two up the middle. Two and one. Gonzalez at the plate. And you can hear cheers of MVP in the, de in the background. You gotta love his candidacy. The two one. He's yet to throw that 68 to 72 mile an hour slider to either one of the left handers, Giambi or Gonzalez. Continues to add velocity to the pitches uh, from a low angle. I think Buster Posey, George, wouldn't you agree going out there? And they're talking about what pitch do you want to throw right here? Well, and that's similar to what he pitched, uh, the pitch he threw to Giambi. It was 91, and it was up a little bit, or, or I should say away from him, and he didn't induce the swing. That may be where he wants to go right now with Carlos Gonzalez, who's hit lefties at a 330-322 clip, 13 of the 33 home runs. Ramirez, the right-hander for San Francisco, and Wilson, the closer. And he got him on that sweeping slider. Two outs. That'll bring up Tulowitzki. Yeah, it sure will. I mean, there again, this is where he really, uh, you know, added a little more velocity to the slider and moved it up to 83 versus taking velocity off. Shortened the breakup. And uh, made the pitch he needed to make. Well, they're going to have some switches here. They're going to go to the bullpen. More than likely, Wilson's going to get a four pitch out, or it could be Ramirez. But uh, Sandoval's going to come in. He's going to go to third base 
for the Giants, and it is going to be Wilson. They're close. He's going to get four outs here. Try to get four outs. Hopefully, doesn't. Nine seven, two on, two out. So Mike Fontenot goes over to second, so Emmanuel Burris comes out. He wasn't out there very long. Fontenot represents the third, second baseman utilized tonight. Freddie Sanchez started the ball game there. Brian Wilson is on trying to get four outs. He had a 1-2-3 save last night. Tulowitzki at the plate. Fowler at third. Clint Barmas running for Giambi is at first. Two hits tonight, including a two-run home run for Tulowitzki inside. Last night, Wilson picked up the save in the game. He only threw eight pitches. He has eight saves uh, with three over three outs this year. One other thing about Wilson, he's pitched in eight games against the Rockies this year. Five saves and an earned run average under one. One and one. Chris Ray earlier in the ball game had not given up a home run all year until Tulowitzki ripped one to left. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Deep right field. Way back. And go. Now off the top of the wall. Two runs have scored to tie it. Trulowitzki comes through. How much did he miss a homer by? fly ball and as he got out into right field again Wilson 98 mile an hour heater too it all started with Dexter Fowler and then it cleaned up with two the whiskey fastball away and he just turns on this thing on the outer half and the height of this ball hit about that Minnesota sign and slipped off and that's where Shirls grabbed it and then shot it back in Rockies with a chance to win and Melvin Moore at the point he takes a strike Slowed that replay down and hit the KC. About a foot from being a three run home run. 9 9 in the eighth. Tulowitzki comes through again. Four RBI night. And this is going to be a tough play for Wilson. He bobbles and is still able to get the out at first. So we'll go to the ninth inning, tied at nine.
to Lewinsky. Gets after Brian Wilson to tie it up. by four. Number two, Troy Tulowitzki, a four RBI night so far. And then triple threat, three triples for the Colorado Rockies today. Ties a club record, major league record still with the 50 R triples this season for them. And then, of course, Mark Stout is into the clubhouse, hopefully celebrating a victory, guys. All right, Alana, thanks very much. The Rockies have made a number of changes. Carlos Gonzalez is now in left field. Dexter Fowler is in center. Johnny Herrera has moved from second to third. Clint Barmas is in the ball game. He stays in the ball game. He pinch ran for Giambi. He's at second. And the Rockies closer, Houston Street, who has not had much work lately, he's on the mound. Trying to keep everything right where it is, and he's done a great job of doing just that. Nine to nine, both closers now in the ball game. The Rockies have more help in the bullpen than do the San Francisco Giants if it goes beyond the top of the ninth inning. They have Moda and Ramirez remaining in their bullpen. Buster Posey takes ball one from street. Posey, Pat Burrow, and Pablo Sandoval. Ground ball to Barnes. Steady hands of Clint Barnes throws out Buster Posey. One out. Now, just what you needed out of this bullpen. Don't tell Bilal and Betancourt shut down the giant offense and gave the Rockies offense a chance to get back in street with the first out here in the ninth. How many wild rides have we been on this summer? Pat Burrell and RBI tonight. San Francisco on the season is seven and three when tied after eight. The Rockies are nine and nine. It's those one run ball games that Jim Tracy talks about so much and Bruce Bochy, both very good managers and winning the winning the ball game. One strike count on Burrow. Here's Houston Streets delivery. One run games this year, San Francisco 28 and 23. The Rockies 27 and 28. Crowd's just been announced 43,402, more than 49,000 last night. Good pitch. You couldn't locate it any better. That was the changeup, George, one and two. And a very good pitch of a changeup, too. It's all about the location. You know, you hear about fastball slider mix from street, but you don't hear a lot about the changeup. Really coming out of the Hyundai cam, a lot of pronation rotation of the baseball to get uh, that late movement on it. 
more importantly, it's the placement and lack of velocity. Oh, he got away with one. That wasn't his best slider, but it froze Burrow. Two outs. Pitching your closer in the ninth inning, you hope to give some momentum to the offense going to the bottom of the ninth. A hanger at 85 results in a punch out. And now the free swinging Pablo Sandoval, who has lost his everyday job at third because he's been in a horrendous slump in the second half of the season. Sandoval trying to play hero. Four for his last 28, seven for his last 50. Oh, and one on Sandoval. Kung Fu Panda. Almost swung at that. One ball, one strike. When he first came up, everything went his way. Nobody could figure it out. And bouncing balls ended up in base hits. Balls over his head were base hits. And then all of a sudden, people started to zero in a little bit. And the struggle started. At Coors Field, you see those numbers. Over 18 games, 243, a couple of home runs, and 10 RBIs. Three to head, or even on the count at one and one. One and two. I'll give you an idea what George is talking about. When he came up in 08, he had 145 at-bats. He had 345. Last year, full-time duty, he hit 330 with 25 and 90. And this year, he has slumped to 264. Still a very young player. Here's the 1-2. And it is pulled to right. It's a fair ball. And Sandoval is going to have his first extra base hit since September the 5th, 20 days ago. First hit he's had in his career against Street, too. That's uh, something that you uh, would it not anticipate. Let's see the pitch and where it was. It brought that ball down and away on a changeup. Uh, just stayed up into the strike zone and allowed him to extend those arms and push the ball down into the corner. Rebates two for eight in his career against Houston Street. I'll tell you what, there are other guys I'd like to see at the plate right now than this guy, George. Well, he just had gotten so many big game hits. I mean, a lot of game hits to, to win ball games. Get it across. He's not going to get cheated. You're going to have to make your pitch. I think the one thing that does favor Houston Street, he has the ability to take that fastball and slider and work it away from a rebay and work it down. In front side, this area here is going to typically bail off of the pitch. Good foul. They're making a mistake inside because he's going to cheat. He's going to get after it quick. If you make a big enough mistake inside, he'll hurt you. Two strike count. Aribe will chase. Sandoval at second with two outs. 9-9. Nine, nine. And this is a pop up the two Lewinsky will have easily. Street does his thing in the ninth, and now the Rockies will try to win it in the bottom half of the ninth. Help, snowboards, and I and out of
now. Hopefully the Rockies can. Todd Helton takes strike one from Brian Wilson. Right guy, right time. Five for 12 in his career against Wilson. 0 oh 2. Helton this year, though the average well below his norm, is hitting 330 when he leads off an inning. Interesting stat. Spielborg's on deck. Tulowitzki tied it with a two run double last inning. Wilson working on back to back days, not unusual. But he came on in the eighth inning tonight, faced two hitters. He has eight saves this year that have gone beyond one inning. Now he's just trying to get the Giants to the tenth inning. Wilson has a blown save tonight, having given up the two run double to Tulowitzki. Strikes out help. Yeah, nasty pitch, 91 miles an hour, just an outside corner. Pretty good location with some movement on the outside to, to get the strikeout. 85th strikeout this year for Todd. 300. 79 at bats, a much higher rate this year than at any point in his career. Spielborg fouls it off. You know, as we move forward, George, the Rockies on their bench. Three catchers. Have Ian Stewart and three catchers. Yep. And if you're wondering about Seth Smith, he's not available. He went home. He was not feeling well. One of those deals, George, you'd love to get two innings at a street. Well, it gives you six outs to try to win it, not have to go back to the bullpen anymore. You're down to Westalona, they do know Reynolds and Morales and David. Two outs. The Giants are down to Motor and Ramirez. Chase Slider uh, off of the plate, anticipating fastball when he went away, and he just painted the slider at 89. Ionetta owns a couple of walk offs this year, and he has a base hit. So the winning run is on with two outs. Now, if you're Jim Tracy, you have a boatload of catchers. There's two outs. Do you pull Ionetta for a pinch runner or not with two outs? Well, I think they're talking about it right now. And then uh, Tommy Reynolds suggested now he's going to be able to tell them what's going on. That's why he's yelling at Wally Bell. You can go even up and put Olivo in there, who runs really well. And you're going to have to have another catcher. And it would make sense instead of burning a player, have Miguel run. will run for Ionetta. Ionetta two for five in this game with an RBI. Yep, Chris did a great job. And now Dexter will have his second at bat. He singled. Leading off the eighth inning. Against Jeremy Affel.
2-0. and Jonathan Herrera on deck. Don't fall asleep. Well, just because you've been over on the bench, don't get all giddy and start hopping around over there and get picked off. Pitches, he's walked Fowler, and now the winning run at second base. And Miguel Oliva sprinted to second to get the legs a little more loose. And Jonathan Herrera, the diminutive, fearless utility man at the plate. Herrera came in the ball game in the second inning. Eric Young was hitting the neck on an errant throw by Chris Ionetta. He's one for three in a walk. Well, one for three in his career against uh, Wilson also. He takes a strike. on deck. Nine, nine, bottom of nine. Rocky season perhaps on the brink. Trying to snap a five-game losing streak. That's nasty. 92 mile an hour cutter on the knees. Put precisely where he wanted and called a strike from Wally Bell. They set up away. Two and two. He wanted that one, George. That was his best heater at 98. Well, you've watched eight pitchers from the Rockies and eight from the Giants, 16 pitchers trying to get through nine innings. And there's been a lot of frustrated looks at Wally Bell tonight. Two and two. Three and two. And this almost assures the run on a base hit because the runners will be off. The only one that counts is Oliva. Two again. Chop to third. It is a fair ball, and Sandoval got to the bag in front of Oliva. Will go extra frames. The Rockies threaten in the bottom of the ninth. We'll go to the ten. Tied at nine.
Long, Jack Lynch beef jerky, feed your wild side. Uh, speaking of wild, this thing has been a wild affair. Nine runs, 15 hits for the Giants. Nine runs, 15 hits, and a couple of miscues for the Rockies. Miguel Olivo's behind home plate. He visits with uh, Wally Bell. Hey, Wally, you haven't been very good, all right? So we need to pick it up here in this inning. I want you to really stretch it out and ring everybody up. Probably not what happened. Second inning of work for Houston Street. The Giants have played extra frames 18 times. They've won 11. The Rockies have played extra frames 16 times. They're 7 and 9. Mike Fontenot will lead things off. Nate Shearholtz is on deck. And then Cody Ross. First pitch swinging, and it's a pop up to shallow left center. Fowler has it one out. He's in the bottom of the tenth. We'll have Barmas, Gonzalez, Tulowitzki. Nobody's throwing right now, unless I can't see very well behind the hedges. No, nobody's throwing in the Giants' bullpen. Well, last night Wilson only threw eight pitches. The day before he was off because the Cubs uh, scored 13 runs, or excuse me, the Giants did. And won by a huge part. So flip it to help for the second out here in the tenth. That'll bring up Cody Ross. Giants have a couple of home runs tonight at the leadoff spot. Andres Torres hit a home run in the third. He had to leave the ball game in the fifth. And in the first at bat for Cody Ross, his replacement, he hit a three run homer. Also a fly ball to center field. Two outs, nobody on in the tenth. Second inning of work for Houston Street. Slider misses, ball one. A lot of veteran right handed bats still left on the bench for the Giants. Rowan, Rollinger, Ford, Renteria. Renteria and Rowan are a couple of guys that have been around a while, but Velez is the guy that stepped out in the on deck circle with a couple of outs, a left handed bat. What I don't understand is if Ross gets on, your Velez is pinch hitting for Wilson. And again, nobody's throwing for the Giants. That's there also, one and two. Well, maybe it's Ramirez, George, who was up earlier. Well, he was up earlier, and he was loose quickly. And a veteran guy. He knows how to warm up. Two left. Uh, Mode is the other guy. That's it. All the lefties are gone out of the bullpen. They've used eight pitchers. Rockies have used seven. Two and two. They just keep bringing in ex-Rockies. Affelt an ex-Rocky, Lopez an ex-Rocky, and if Ramirez comes in, he's an ex-Rocky. Three and two. Hamill started a long time ago. He went five innings. He gave up four runs. Barry Zito. Didn't last that long. He went four and a third. De La Rosa and Kane tomorrow. Right center field, but Spielboards is shooting in that direction. A one, two, three, ten for Houston Street. Barmas, Cargo, and Tulowitzki in the bottom of the tenth.
Hit four home runs. Tulowitzki has four RBIs tonight. Brian Wilson to Clint Barmas here in the 10th. Wilson came on with two outs in the eighth. Keep in mind, there have been five lead changes. The Rockies led two to one. They led six to four. Tulowitzki tied it up with a two run double off Wilson in the eighth. 1-0 on Barmas, first at bat for Clint, line drive foul. Don't run a heater inside, I don't care if he hadn't been in the lineup for a while or not. Uh, for Clint Barmas, the guy that can pull the trigger easily on a fastball in. The pitchers for the Giants, Zito, Ray, Runzler, Casilla, Affelt, Romo, Lopez, and now the 28-year-old closer, Brian Wilson, a native of New Hampshire. On the inside corner, one and two. Well, he's only faced eight batters this season, only two other times, and uh, that he's faced more than eight batters, I should say. Ten in both of those times. This is a bulldog closer, and it tells you exactly where Bochi is mentally with this ball game. Win today's game, worry about tomorrow when the sun comes up. Strike three, they just rung up Barnes. The first base umpire, Hirschbeck, said he went around. Yeah, I'm not sure I agree with that. Check the overhead now. Let's see if that bat crossed the zone of what we're talking about. I apologize. Good go around and a good call by John Hirschbeck. Franklin Morales, the left hander, he's getting loose for the Rockies. Outside of Daly's, the most experienced guy down there. Carlos Gonzalez. Ball one. Single in the first and a run scored. Caught looking in the third on a pitch off the plate. RBI triple in the fifth. Grounded into a 5-4-3 double play in the sixth. And struck out swinging against Javier Lopez in the eighth. Here's the 1-0. Well, Bruce Bochy uh, said the day before the ball game, the two guys he didn't want to see Wilson look at last night, these two, Total Whiskey and Gonzalez. And here it has Gonzalez in the tenth inning with one out and nobody on facing his closing. 2 0. Oh. Ground ball, diving stop, and an infield hit. Good play by Mike Fontenot. But Cargo reaches with one out in front of Tulowitzki. And now, George, depending on how Jim Tracy wants to play it, the running game is part of the equation. It can be. Gonzalez with 25 steals. He's been caught this year eight times. Nice diving stop by Fontenot. And a good throw to first base. Just not in time to get Gonzalez. And again, this is a situation where you can go. Posey on the season has only thrown out 31 and a half percent of would be base stealing. 17 of 54. To Lewitsky in his last three at bats two run home run, single, two run double. Pitch is low for a ball. Posey throws well. Wilson, like so many closers, disdains the slide step. He's not going to disrupt what he does, uh, the outcome of the ball at home plate. He feels because of his ability to throw the ball into the mid to high 90s, typically, now he's in his third inning of work. And a good slider that uh, he doesn't need the slide step. What he might lose with a high leg kick, he regains with his velocity. Lewitsky, 39 RBIs this month, the most ever in the month of September by a Rockies player. It ties the all time mark for ribbies in a month. Dante Bichette at 39 back in June of 96. 40 has a nice ring to it. <laughs> Two and one. Okay, with Troy now. George in his fourth major league season does very well. And that is set up pitchers. Well, he waits to get a pitch that he can drive. I mean, he's a, he's a guy with an upright stance. He's a guy that likes the ball from the thighs up. And he can do damage with it. That's what he did on the pitch that he hit out of the ballpark. 
two and one. Gonzalez going, and it's right center field. He had to stop for a moment, and he'll go to third. And now Richie Dyer is going to send it. Here's a throw to the play. Send it to the play. Rockies win it. Rockies win it, Chenna. Tulowitzki, 40 in this unforgettable month of September, and the Rockies are still alive. Wilson didn't want to see Gonzalez and Tulowitzki last night. He got him tonight in the 10th, and he didn't like it much. Jimmy John's delivery of the game, Troy Tulowitzki. Look at the pitch, belt high, scalded the left field. And out of the reach of Arriba, and then all of a sudden you're going to go off to the races. Pat Burrell out in left field, and he's going to have to go out and try to slide stop this ball. Phil Whiskey at that point realized that I've got two, but will Gonzalez score? And that's what Richie Dyer made the motion in Phil Whiskey jog as he watched the incoming Gonzalez slide head first well ahead of the throw from the Giants' middle infielder. Troy Tulowitzki is with Mark Stapp downstairs. Mark? All right, guys, Troy, 2-1 pitch. You've got a closer on the hill that's as good as there is. Is this the kind of battle that you relish? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know what to say. I'm lost for words, but I wanted to be up there. Uh, I like my chances. Wilson has great stuff, but I was feeling it. Did you know that Carlos was moving on the pitch? Yeah, I saw him. Uh, in that situation, I always swing the bat if I see a good pitch. He made a good read. Richie sent him. Uh, big win. Big win. So you, were you looking for anything in particular or just trying to hit the ball hard? No, wasn't looking for a pitch. Wanted a ball in the zone through Cutter. Got him on a fastball last time. Cutter uh, put a good swing on it. 83 wins for this team. There's 43,000 here. We hope they come back tomorrow. What does it mean to have these fans here in the house and to see you guys come up with this victory? They help. We never quit. Um, for all the people that stayed, thank you. Uh, if we're going to do this thing, we're going to need you. We can't do it uh, just with the players we have in the stug out. We're going to need you guys. Um, you know, No matter if it's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, please come. You help. And a comment about the players. Dexter gets on. Jason Giambi gets a hit. Across the board, this is what the team's all about. Yeah, it's a team. We've battled all year. There's no reason to quit now. And uh, those guys in the clubhouse that I'm with uh, battle to the end. I think everybody knows that. Thank you, Troy Tulowitzki. Thank you. Not right. much else to say, guys. No, I'll tell you what. He was at a loss for words initially. You can understand why. What a job tonight. A collective job. Rockies win it 10 9 and 10. Straight the winner. Wilson takes the loss. Stick around. Board cut.